Now for the pledge. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like a motion to come out of executive session. Motion. All in favor? Second. We need a second. Yeah. Lou seconded. Okay. Lou seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Mayor, we emerge from executive session at 7.25 p.m. We'll discuss three matters. One, the first was a personnel matter dealing with township employee. The second was a litigation matter dealing with uh, Missouri and Hawk versus Wapaka Township. And the third is a public safety contractual matter dealing with the EMS squad. No official action was taken. Copies of these notes will be available at such time as the council determines there's no harm to the public. Okay, uh, at this point, I would like to motion to go into public. Let's comment. do roll call. What? Roll call. Well, Attic, did you say Attic? Uh, I don't know if you said that either. <laughs> Attic would notice that this meeting has been put in the time and place of the meeting in accordance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1995 by advertising a notice in the Star Gazette and the Express Times and by posting a copy on the bulletin board in the municipal building. Right, the next thing is roll call. Roll call, please. Councilman Belcaro. Here. Councilwoman McKay. Here. Councilwoman Schneider. <coughs> Here. Council President Chester. Here. And Here. I, um, I need to interrupt with a call for the orders of the day. Um, let me explain. The, the township adopted at his reorg meeting in. And follows Robert Rules of Order, newly revised, 10th edition. We currently have a dispute over the proper agenda or the orders of the day. The mayor's agenda, as it is being called, is, is out of order, and that is not the mayor's agenda. Lopakong is a small municipality form C government established under the Faulkner Act, New Jersey, uh, NJSA 40 colon 69A-1, etc. Both the Faulkner Act and the Township Charter, which incorporates relevant sections of the Act, are silent on the topic of who prepares the agenda. NJSA 40 colon 69A-120 gives the council the legislative powers of the township and gives the mayor the power to preside over the meeting. Neither function is further defined anywhere in the act. NJSA 40 colon 69A-121 regarding the mayor's power is also silent on the agenda. However, when we go to NJSA 40 colon 69A-127, duties of the municipal clerk, it reflects that the municipal clerk shall serve as clerk of the council perform such functions as may be required by law of the municipal clerks generally, have other such powers and duties as council may prescribe, yada, yada. Therefore, since the charter and our act are silent on the agenda, and since NJSA 40 colon 69A-127 gives the clerk the power to perform such functions as they may be required by the law of municipal clerks, pursuant to one of the laws of the municipal clerks, which is 40A colon 9-133E2, this reflects that the municipal clerk prepares the agenda at the direction of the governing body. That they, then that is the governing law, and the agenda is the product of the entire governing body, not just the mayor alone. We've been having a problem for the last couple last couple months with getting items on the agenda. One of mine was pulled off. One is Maureen's pull off. I just want to lay this to rest right now because I can't. I don't have time to keep fighting with this. I have work to do for the town. So. And in the same fashion that we've come to, to expect, our items are being refused to be placed on the agenda, um, regardless of their necessity and the utter lack of transparency that that attitude promotes. And it's potentially harmful to the township. The one item I wanted on here today was a resolution to authorize our bond council to refinance our bonds to save us money. This needs to be done before we introduce our budget. So therefore, in accordance with Robert's Rules of Order, Part 1, Main Motion, Section 18, I call for the orders of the day. It is a call that, again, citing Robert's Rules, can interrupt the flow of business, does not require a second, cannot be debated or amended, and requires no vote. To the contrary, if anybody wants to avoid the orders of the day, you must make a motion, have a second, and it has to be repealed with a two-thirds majority vote. All I want to do is, is get our items on the agenda so I have additional agendas out there with our items on there and I just want to clear this up and I don't know if attorney Lavery wants to weigh in on the agenda at this point but well um I will say this I don't 
if the clerk statute, I think, sets forth the duties of the clerk. So even though that does reference governing by and I don't think I would extrapolate from that that that's who sets the agenda. Now, I will say this to be fair, I think we all have to work together. Mm -hmm. if you have this uh, small c form of government, which reports back to form of government, is unique in that um, you have a mayor that also votes with the council, which is you know, a lot of fault practice and how they special strong, especially strong mayor form of uh, government. Uh, the mayor only votes in the case of the high, um, and you don't normally have, and when you have a council president on the other hand, normally the council president runs the meetings and uh, forms the government where the mayor kind of sits off to the side. We're unique in that we have a council president and we have a mayor, and we have a mayor who, while they don't consider, you know, while Michael Panay, who is uh, uh, a, a writer about what was writer about these uh, type of things, or a treatise uh, in the English practice here, he says it's not extraordinary form of government. There are a lot of indications. Uh, some of the powers are those that you will find in extraordinary form of government. So I would also say this that my the normal practice is that whoever uh, chairs the meeting, which obviously the mayor chairs the meeting, would normally have control over the agenda. However, I agree that that's not set forth anymore. Right. And, and I think Robert Rules of Orders actually says that it's the agenda of the entire committee. Yeah, that's true. And as a matter of fact, I looked at Robert Trump's about that issue, and it says basically the committee sets the agenda. Mm -hmm. The problem that we have as a municipality, though, is that you know Robert Trump doesn't think that have the public meetings after we have to have the agenda. So I don't disagree that I think we have to work together, you know, the mayor and the council president, because obviously, you know, even though the mayor is the administrative and you're the legislative, it's 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 a unique situation. Um, so. And, and that's my only concern is that with the Open Public Meetings Act, you know, we have to have our agenda mm -hmm. uh, in advance, obviously, so that the public can take a look at what the township's going to discuss. And you can obviously add stuff to the agenda at the last right. minute if, if it just came up at the last minute. You know, mm -hmm. if you knew about it before, and obviously, you know, you don't want people keeping something off the agenda and then springing it on someone at the last minute. I'm not right. anybody can do it. No, no. That's the I handed mine in last week. I have the agenda in advance. So I would say, if there's items to be added to the agenda, if there are those items that can wait for the next so they can be added and then mm -hmm. you know, address it the next Well, what meeting. if they're added and then taken off? Well, who I mean, who has the right to take anything off our agenda? Well, I don't know that. I mean, I think that's a decision of the mayor and council. Okay. But like I said, normally, uh, you know, whoever is in charge of the meeting, but I said, I think our situation is unique because you have a council president and you have a mayor. So I think. Uh, but there isn't anything that says that the mayor has the authority to, to do it or, or the council. So I think the answer is we've got to work together. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to do. I just don't want to fight about it every month. Right. And I had a um, an item in as of last week, and it was pulled off. No discussion, no comments, and I think that that's wrong. It's improper, it's unfair, and it shows lack of transparency and lack of teamwork. So I think we need to iron this out. Uh, and then our agenda is changed. Now we have something called new business council items. Why isn't everything under new business? Why do we need to split it out? If it's new business council items, well, why don't you have new business uh, engineer items, new business clerk items? I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, the the we I have, have this my in our agenda because the agenda was changed again at the last minute. So. Um, it probably didn't get out to Most the public. Of this is here. Most of this is because we have to have some kind of like structure around how things get into the agenda. Well, mine was in in plenty of time, plenty of time. Yes, and I but never yours, an explanation. yours should have been, I think, first submitted to the Finance Committee, as we are required to have it under our charter, and but then why? by the Finance Committee to the Council. And that's what I told Mrs. Deltz. So does that mean that nobody Because you don't have the authority on? to do that, to, in my mind. I have the authority to put anything. If I want to put a resolution on the agenda to paint all the fire hydrants in this town pink, I have the authority to do that. Whether you guys shoot me down because it was a ridiculous item, that's one thing. But I have the ability to put anything on this agenda. So does everybody on council. We all have an equal vote. But and I mean, such as the financing of the debt, which is part of a larger financial picture and, and strategy that we yet to have had put into place in this township it needs to go through the finance committee. It needs to get a lot of thought because we have to, besides refinance the debt, we have to figure out how we're going to start repaying the debt. We have a big problem with that, a big problem that other townships around us don't have. And I think that deserves not 
Somebody my, coming my, in and telling us we're going to do it, but it deserves a very long conversation. Yeah, but we what, should investigate it. And we have why to do it should before. be on the agenda. Yes, and you, you were emailed by our, our auditors, too, on the same thing. We were both received an email from our auditors suggesting that we investigate refunding our bonds. Yes, and we, that's always been the intent. Of okay, and that's we need to authorize them. No, they can't just do that. We need to authorize them so they can do it before <laughs> the budget or else the, the savings will not be reflected in this budget. That's all I'm trying to do is save the, the town. The I'm town not going to jump money. into a refinance of the bonds you don't have until to. we have a larger discussion on That's the what on they would do. Have. We need to authorize them to investigate it for us. That's all I was asking. The the um, item that was on there didn't say to authorize to to discuss it. It was to execute. Um, I didn't say to execute. It never made it on an agenda. Well, it was on. It on now. No, it here. was on the last. I believe it was on last the last agenda of the meeting that was canceled. I believe it was on there. Um, also, you know. It, when you submit an item for uh, uh, to be put on an agenda, there should be backup documentation with it, so each council member knows exactly what it is that they are voting on, that they're looking at. I have Dave and John for backup here. That's why they're but here. That's but you no, know, we should have. Well, if they're if they were going to to do this, then there would have been a plan put in place and for us to look at it and review it and understand it and ask questions. I'm, that's what I want to do. I want to authorize. I have something on the agenda to authorize the bond council to investigate it, so they can get us the documentation that we can look at to see if we want to execute that. The that's what I'm council? trying to do. Bond council. Yes, that's what it has to go. Is the bond council present? No, we have to authorize them to do that. They're, they're if you guys still, don't want to see the town money, no, that's okay. That, that's fine, but also um, the auditor has not yet been hired for this year. I know, I know. but we so, still have to do this before we do the budget, if we want to do it for this year. If you don't want to do it for this year, that's fine. I just want to put it out there. I don't want to lose sight of it. Yeah, and we need to know all the particulars, how much it's going to cost, who's going to do it. You and know, we what have. We would authorize him to investigate. Why? Why do we need to authorize him to investigate? Because we he, have to. That's how our government works. They can't just do it on their own. But he sent an email out saying he was going to <coughs> save the township <coughs> money, and that's all he said. He needs to. He said he has an opportunity for us that we can investigate. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. I will make. Well, I will it's not a sooner. question of wanting to do it or not wanting to okay, do it. Okay. So what's the problem? Because you, there's never, uh, you know, our typically our agendas come to us with no backup documentation for for a majority of the items, and they're either put on last minute or there's no paperwork for anyone to come up to. Have it beforehand to make educated choices what up here. What type of paperwork could I possibly have to say that I want to authorize the bond council to investigate refunding bond opportunities? That's not, not what the like Wikipedia page on refunding bond right, opportunities. Right. Right. Um, that's not what your. Uh, that's not what it said on there. It's and it was never. Last was it ever on an agenda? Yes. On there when? There were at least a dozen agendas in the last few days. I don't have the last agenda item on there, but I do know that I saw it I on one of the emails. The that I made up Thursday. Okay. And then Mayor asked to remove it. Because I believe it has to go first to the Finance Committee because it's very important. But the wording actually made it sound like this was taking place tonight. No, it's just to authorize them. But, it, but that's not what it said. It well, made I'm it sorry, sound like it was being executed this evening and with no information to make but an who made the decision choice. to take it off? Right. Okay, you don't have that authority. I think I do. I don't think you do, and I'd like Mr. Lavery to look into that. All right. There. My item was removed as well. My what item was to hire right? our computer technician. Right, that's the task force. Uh, that's, no, that's it's not the task own. force either. Yes, that's it my, is. And as a matter of fact, it could be hired by the, the <clears throat> purchasing agent. It's under the 17.5 limit. And we can have this done. Well, right now Once we have it as a bid games. process. Right now they are they are required to submit an RFP. Who's required to submit an RFP? We have one already. Right. And so you we sent a document yesterday from another company that's working for Greenwich that we should consider. What does that have to do with anything? Where they're where they're working, Maureen? They are, the mayor sent me out to take uh, do a task and to find other offers. You know, to not to not it's to just March. take the first. How order. much longer are we going to look? Well, Maureen, because there are other things that we need to take care of and our, yes, our instead of hiring our attorneys. They're a holdover, <coughs> Maureen. We still have coverage, okay? Mm -hmm. They're contracted to be a holdover. 
it's March. We couldn't point them. Why? So what? What? The what delay is, and what, what would that? What would that serve? Would whether you're you point or not a point tonight on the task force? Well, we've already paid our. We we already have to pay um, our current computer guy because we're uh, we're on his server as of January first. So he already got paid. So it's a non-issue. No, it's, it's, done, it's not taken care of. We've and already paid our computer technician. There's no need to find someone else, or then we'll pay double. Is that what you want to do? Cost the town money twice? <laughs> no, Maureen, that's not what I want to do, and let's uh, let's not get into that. It is that's a task force. I was waiting for the bid, and that's why we have not done anything. And also, our meeting was canceled last time, so we have not okay. had anything. It's still March. We had January. We had February, and here we are letting another meeting go without a point. And what and what is that causing the township right now? It's not. We're trying to make some decisions here without just taking the first person, and we're trying to get some. And we're trying to. No, it's not, Maureen. It really yes. isn't. No, it's not. Please, uh, Mr. Lavery, perhaps it would be useful if you could give just a thumbnail outline of the authority and powers of, the, say, the mayor and the council president. Council and whole. I'm not looking just for myself. Well, looking for the council as you know, whole. The problem is any of the real answers are contained in cases that have been litigated. The powers overlap somewhat. So the mayor runs the day-to-day -day operations of the town. Uh, he makes the administrative decisions. The council president is the head of the council. The council does the legislative events. So that's the easy thing. Then, then getting into the nitty-gritty of who does what, what's the municipal charter, which takes the language pretty much right out of the Faulkner Act small seat uh, for the government, and then. There are certain people who the mayor appoints that are set forth in shorter, then there are certain people that the governing body appoints, which would be the mayor voting with the council. And you know, obviously this issue came up with regard to the auditor, and because the auditor is a position that is provided for in the general law that you're required to have one, that made it a governing body or a mayor and council appointment. So basically the various appointments, you just got to take a look at the charter and see who, who has the authority to do that. Some of them aren't that easy. Some of them you have to go through it, you know, as an officer and employee, and you have to see if it's provided for general law somewhere else. And then uh, if they're not, then it becomes a mess. So, you know, I hate to sound like a lawyer, but it's kind of a situation. <laughs> but generally speaking, the council is the legislative end of the town, and the mayor is the administrator and runs the day-to-day -day operation. The mayor can make certain policies during the day, but then the council can go and make their own policy and say the policy of the town is going to be that. So, I guess uh, at the end of the day, we have to work together. Because it says right here in, in Robert's rules, it is wrong to assume, as many do, that the president sets the agenda. It's common for the president to prepare a proposed agenda, but that becomes binding only if it is adopted by the full assembly, perhaps after amendments as just described. So I, I mean, I don't know. What, what do I do to get items on the agenda? That's my question. Well, I think you're entitled as council president to get items put on the agenda. Uh, and I think that, you know, I can go and research it some more. I looked at Robert's rules. I found the same thing he found. I think mm -hmm. went through the statutes. There's nothing in the municipal charter that says that uh, who has the authority to prepare it. I said, you know, the kind of practice was whoever chairs the meetings is the one that, you know, basically oversees the agenda. But, you know, I think here it's, it's, a, it's an interesting situation because you do have a council president and a mayor, and I think that you ought to be able to get stuff on the agenda. And I'll be happy to research it further if you want me to, but I don't know if there's going to be anything else out there. Most, most of the stuff we have definitive answers on certain issues are in cases that have been litigated already with regard to who has what powers. And then they're not so clear either because you have the Sharp James case, which that's a strong mayor form of government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Form under the form yeah, that was in so what, a mayor there's council? There's general principles right. that apply, but mm -hmm. it all comes back to the municipal charter and it all comes back to what's it for. In the chart, which mm -hmm. isn't always clear either. And how does that uh, NJSA 40A colon 9 133 E2 fall into it? Does that weigh into That's, it at all? I, I think I get to the same conclusion, but I don't think that that is the just sort of the public's edification. That's the statute that says what the clerk's powers are. I don't know that you could extrapolate from the clerk's powers that basically says the clerk prepares the agenda as direction of the, the, the government the yeah. body. But I, I don't know that you can use that to say that the governing body does. Now, I think, ultimately, because of our form of government, that's the way it should work. Right. But I don't mm -hmm. necessarily agree that that statute says it. Okay. Well, I think mean, you just look into it. It says because... that, but I think it says it with regard to what the clerk's duties are, not necessarily that, you know, that's who says it. Because I just don't, I don't you know. <coughs> It's not, yeah, it's not. Even that we have to come up with a policy because I'm not going to fight to put something on the agenda. I, I love doing this. I love working for the town and I love getting things done and I'm not going to fight every single month to get something on the agenda. I'm not. 
<clears throat> we put forth a, a proposed policy for getting things on the agenda. I sent it out to everyone, but no one responded. Well, things have to be adopted by council well, to be policy. I wanted to get the basic understanding of what people were looking for, and no one responded. So we are trying. We, we can't discuss things in email. Right. I can send we have it to out. discuss it here. Much? We should not. No, we should not do no, that. Can make decisions. No, no just yeah. sent it out. I sent them out so they have something to look at. So we can and discuss. And yeah, if it wants to come up, I mean, I'm again. We want to put things. We want to get things done. We want to put things on the agenda. So how do we do that? Well, I would make a suggestion if you had a, if you had an agreement or a policy that said that any agenda items have to be in X days before or by such and such a day, and then everybody is aware that. And then who? Again, my other question is that's great, oh, and I did get mine in early, but who has the authority to pull it off? I would believe that everything should be. This is my my idea of having everybody have a fair share. Any council member up here should be able to put something on the agenda. If we want to set a date by what time. That's fine. It's, and then if you want something pulled off, it should be discussed here as a group. I mean, that's what I would assume, to have a fully functional council that's working together. And then, like I said, if I put on a resolution to paint all the fire hydrants pink, I would think that you would all not want that on there, but that should be discussed here. Well, you know, it, things have changed, actually, because um, before Mayor McKay took office, the procedure was that the mayor makes the final call on the agenda. And when I sent in, in um, things that I would like on the agenda, I was told I have to check to see if it's allowed. So well, now... Well, you argued with them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I sent my stuff in. I never asked them for approval. I sent it. Well, to I you know I sent my stuff in too, and it never got on. So you know what um you know <clears throat> that because I was told the mayor makes the final decision, and now all of a well, sudden things have right changed. Either, well, okay. Right? Okay, but now now you don't think he's right. So now we're we're going to a different way. And you know, if you're going to keep going with the Roberts rules, then you ought to follow Roberts rules for everything else in there, including um, the minutes. And uh, you know we're we're, pick, we're cherry picking Robert's rules, and either you adopt them or you don't adopt them. That's a very strong point. Well, I'm I'm relying more on the statute, and I'm just saying again, I don't want to have to come to every meeting and have to fight to have my items put on the agenda. I have worked very hard these last two years, you know that, regardless of politics, and I want to continue to do that at least for the remainder of my term. Well, I think if the town. Uh enacts a policy that says that agenda items have to, you know, if they're invited mm -hmm. to the time and then they're going to be on there because otherwise you don't want to have two competing agendas. Right. So mm -hmm. agenda. Yeah. Just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. So what about my items for tonight? Are they on or are they off? <laughs> the only thing I would say is have them on for the next because that's a problem is, you know, we have the impact of the open public meetings mm -hmm. so they're not on the agenda so what I would suggest is that they be placed on the agenda if that's the new policy for the next meeting and then go from there. Well, we're given notice right now. We're putting them on the agenda so it's in on time. Well, and I hope that all the backup documentation is with I You already have, have it all done. I have no backup to give you for this. Sorry, right. since with, with, January. With respect to refinancing the debt, this is a serious issue. And you have to give some kind of indication of what you're planning to do or what you think is appropriate to do. I mean, what type of debt structure are you considering? He, I just want him to investigate Do you want to do serial bonds? I, don't, I want him do to want investigate it. Debt? I want him to you investigate it. made her point already that what? she wants it investigated. It. Yeah. That was the point. Investigate it? You don't usually investigate something like that. You just so. determine what you want to do, what your goals you're trying to accomplish. My goal is to save the taxpayers money. In what regard? In, to in save money, paying or, interest, yes. Well, how about fees? How we, um, you Same know, thing. How okay, so, so are we going to put this on the agenda and discuss it now? Or are we going to wait till next meeting? Well, I think it's best to, that it gets run through the um, Finance Committee because it's a very important financial matter. Talk to the, the finance. Financial Committee and to the CFO. Come into one uniform way of thinking about what you want to accomplish. Then bring it to council and let council know what it'll be too do. late it has to go or it's for this budget late. for this budget it will be we have a meeting in two weeks We're so we'll go on the agenda for two weeks then and we'll discuss okay. it yeah. and it can but i want you to meet with the, the cfo and with the finance committee i cannot meet with the entire finance committee that would be in violation of the open public meetings act i'll meet with the the cfo and i'll talk to the auditors again and if there is any documentation, we can do this. But we have to at least get them looking at it. We have to authorize them to look at it. They can't do it on their own. We have to know what we want to get. We can't. I don't know what you're trying to get. Trying. I don't know what a debt structure you're looking to, to put in place. I want them to come to us with some opportunities, some examples, some different, some different options. 
I'm not doing that research myself. That's not my job. That's their job. Well, right. uh, it's my job to authorize them to do their job. But you have to understand what you're asking them to do. I know. And I have to assume that you do understand. Yes. That. Okay. I majored in finance. I understand it. Okay. Um, I will give to um, Mr. Lavery, with Council's permission, the proposed resolution on Council meeting agenda and minutes process that I had, I had circulated before. And so he might want to look at that more. Thank you. I wanted to do that in, in, in the form of a, well, it's a long story, but we didn't do it that way. We were going to have it as a less formal um, administrative policy. We would need to review and approve that as members of council. Did. You did. You got it. You, we you, did not approve it. You didn't approve it. I said I'm giving it to him as a basis for him to come forth and create a uh, an acceptable policy so that we can move forward. Don't you agree that's a good idea? I think we should create our own acceptable policy and review the one you gave and give you our comments on it. But I asked you to do that months ago and you didn't want to or nobody you didn't did it. You bring it so. back up and I did have some issues <laughs> with it and I think we took But we it wasn't on our it. agenda to right. discuss. Because it was intended to be an informal administrative policy. Everyone thought that would be best. But we well, have to make administrative policy here. We can't have any informal policies. I mean, we can review it. We can save attorney fees. We can review it if we send it out again, and we'll review it and see if there's anything you want to add. And then we can adopt it at the next meeting. Right. Make a note. Send that again. Okay. And then we'll have a structure by which we can operate. That would be very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we can... Mm, let's see. Yeah, we can open the uh, meeting for um, the public uh, agenda items only. Um, I uh, need to ask for a motion to do that. Motion. A second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The meeting is open for public item public comment on agenda items only. Hello, Juniper Lifer, 32 Jade Lane. I just wanted to check as chair of the Environmental Commission that under old business number three, uh, we will be completing the appointments for the Environmental Commissioners that you had in mind. Yes, we will. Okay, great, because I need to ensure that that happens. I have some trainings that I would like all the commissioners to attend uh, within the month of March. So hopefully we'll get that established. Um, and second, as a resident, and in reference to the entire rest of the agenda, we need you guys to do better. <laughs> Nobody has time for this. I know. Okay, Ms. Chesla, you know, you, I've heard you state before that we all know we've inherited a mess. Okay, no, nobody sitting up here is really currently responsible for the situation that we're in. But if you don't get your act together <coughs> and start working together mm -hmm. towards solving those problems, you will be the ones who are responsible for it. I agree completely. You owe it to this audience. Mm -hmm. You owe it to everybody who lives in this township to show each other some respect. That is the truth. I have worked with many a person I did not like in my life many times, and I have accomplished great things alongside mm -hmm. them. It does not need to be this way. There is a tone that you can talk, you can talk with and you can show some respect to people. And you can disagree, and you can still get something accomplished. And I really, I think that everybody in this room would really appreciate if you did that. The township itself, its residents really need you to come together. We need you to lead by example. I agree. The people of this township are never going to come together until you do. And it may be hard, and you may disagree. But the seething tone is never going to get you there. <coughs> Mayor McKay. I do not envy you, but I greatly appreciate and value what you're trying to do. Thank you very much. My name is Louis Cardabona. Uh, my address is 1119 Fifth Avenue in Alpha, New Jersey. I'm also an elected councilman in Alpha. Uh, on the agenda items, you have number eight and new business. You have pool membership rates include swim team, pool party rates, and pavilion rates for 2015, but it doesn't actually list that to the public. How are you going to list that on your uh, website? Or yeah, it's still a discussion. 
Oh, okay. All right, so that's gonna be up for discussion. All right, and uh, just to make a comment, uh, working on council for two, two years, I know that Robert's Rules is very comprehensive. So you have your, your, your administration code, you have your state char char charter, whatever form of government you have, I've uh, looked at the uh, Lopatcon government, the Faulkner Act. And, but when I'm on council, I always address the mayor instead of the other council people. I basically think if he presides over the, the meeting, then for me to get the floor, I ask the mayor for the floor. To me, it, it, it gives a little bit less of the crosstalk that I've already experienced here. So keep up the good work, everyone. Try to work it out. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Eric Johnson, 361 Stonehenge Drive. Um, I'm confused about the same item, which is old item 10, new item 8. That's the uh, that's the resolution or our discussion for the pool memberships. Uh, just to start off the, the conversation, um, how did this get on the agenda? Could somebody tell me? We, it, it's still just to, I know where you're going. We will still have time to look at them. This is what our proposed rates are. So I was going to make the the recommendation that we put tell you what they are, then we'll bring them to our meeting. And then our meeting is before the next meeting and we can adopt them if we feel we need to make any changes. Okay, so this yeah. is still up. So every, everybody is aware. I just want to make sure everybody on the Township is aware that back in June 2014, I asked to take a look at them. Um, and I've been asking, you know, been trying to get the right. rates since October of 2014. Just recently got them about yeah, six, six days ago. <laughs> Finally, we got them. Um, and I'm going to look at them independently. I'm going to make a recommendation and we can discuss it. And the idea is that I'm going to bring these numbers to the to the township um, on uh, ahead of time on probably March 16th or 17th to be discussed in the March 18th mm -hmm. meeting. So no votes happening tonight in regards to the actual adoption of these these rates. It's open for discussion, and I'm still planning on looking into it. That's what I was going to recommend. Uh, okay. So we could at least look at it at the recreation level. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hall. Bruce Hall, 187 Stone Inch Drive. Uh, several years ago, before we installed our cameras, the council adopted an ordinance uh, authorizing videotaping of the meetings. And uh, consequently, the clerk authorized Carlos Carrera to videotape. But as I understand, my memory serves me, one of the requirements was that was that those videos would be made available to the general public on YouTube. Uh, coincidentally, at the last meeting, I mentioned that I observed something on those videos, and within hours, those videos were made private. So either, I think it's, if he's not going to make them available to the general public, to have the clerk direct him to stop videotaping, or uh, put them back up. I don't think we can, you know, if somebody wants to come in, there's state law that says you have to record, you, you got to allow them to videotape. You can say where they have to stand and, and other things. I'm not aware of the circumstances, Mr. Newman, when you agree with the city. I'm referencing that may be, I'm just our talking. ordinance. Our ordinance says the clerk has right to grant permission. She's right, correct. Okay. But I don't know that we can force someone to put up the tape that they make independently because you could literally have 10 people in the back of the room videotaping the meeting so mm, I mean, I'll, I'll we limit it to one all right well, <laughs> um i'll take i'll be happy to take a look at the ordinance but i don't know i mean maybe that's in there but i don't know well, it's, it's not it was I, th I thought it was a gentleman's agreement that yeah let him come in uh -huh. let him video this is before we had these now we have these i, I don't really see the need for this and now that he's taken them down i I'm, i don't think the public should be videotaped uh for his private use <laughs> yeah unfortunately the state law requires that you allow people to videotape for whatever use they're going to use it for so you know and and i don't believe there's any requirement that they post them on youtube i mean i'll be happy to revisit it and take a look at it but um you know if somebody wants to come in videotape a meeting or videotape meetings so yeah, certain kind of, restrictions. They, again our ordinance says that it can only be done with the consent by the permission of the, of the clerk Right, but you can't bar certain, as long as people are willing to abide by the rules set forth. Right, and one of the rules was that those videos would be made available. I, I that's, that's, that was the discussion that, yeah, that took place. I'm not disagreeing that they say that, but I'm just saying that I don't know that you can require that, but I will be happy to take a look at the ordinance and okay. see. 
know, we'll make sure that people are complying with it, but I don't know that we can enforce that, but I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Carlos Correa, Eddie Two, put in a strong way, just to clarify that the ordinance doesn't say that those videos have to be available on YouTube. You can read it and you can say that it doesn't say that whatsoever. And I'm not the only one that is allowed to videotape, there is another person that is also allowed to videotape. But if you check the ordinance, it doesn't say that we have to put those on YouTube. I had asked the council to put the videotapes that they have of these meetings as soon as maybe two days from now, but I never had a response because there are times that I won't be able to take the videotape, but it will be good that the public will be able to see those in a decent amount of time instead of waiting two months or three months. We can make a policy for that. And I had asked that for about two years already, so um, it'd be good that maybe Mm -hmm. The videos on YouTube can be published like by Friday. That yeah, way, I could make a Mr. policy Hall, during my report. Mr. Hall will be happy and he will not be accusing me of doing something that I'm doing illegal, which I'm not right. doing illegal. Please direct your comments to the, to the chair of the meeting. No, I'm just, yeah. I just don't like the fact that, that somebody's trying to say that I'm doing something illegal when he reads the ordinance. If he reads the ordinance, he doesn't say that. I, that the videotape should be put in YouTube whatsoever, or that I have to share that videotape with anybody. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I can make a policy during my uh, tech report to put them up uh, quicker. We just never, we never decided what to do, so we were just doing it when we approved the minutes. But I can make a policy. We can, I can introduce a policy to do that. We can vote on it, so we could get them up quicker. Yeah, that way, yeah, if this I can, way. This way I don't come here, here mm -hmm. and videotape it. Right. Somebody can see it on Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other persons who wish to speak in this public period? Having seen none or heard none, I, I hereby take a motion to close the public period. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Our next item is the swearing in of a new police officer here in the township, um, Christopher Petrella. Um, if Mr. Petrella is present, would he please come forward? I, Christopher Petrello, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the government established in the United States and to the government established in the United States and to the state and to the state under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, no, faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform all the duties of police officer, all the duties of police officer, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. So let me go. Thank you. All right, we now go into old business. Um, um, before we do that, or as we do it, I want to make a read of prepared remarks about going forward with this council. Um, there was recent press coverage over my desire for civility at town council meetings, and it's absolutely true that I posted civility guidance from the New Jersey League of Municipalities in the public doorway. This genuine effort um, to attain a greater knowledge of civility among our, our, our attendees has apparently offended some people. It's unfortunate and it's all very frustrating. Um, I, I want to do my utmost to bring the necessary changes to this ch townships and that's why the people put me here. Um, the council is here to serve the taxpayers and honestly get the business of the township done. 
its meetings need to be civil. And I firmly believe that local officials need to be less politicians and more public servants, and that they need to encourage conversations rather than arguments. Unanticipated gavel noise level, notwithstanding my problem, my fault, I'm sorry. Um, I believe I have generally been endeavoring to do that while trying to keep some control over these proceedings. Admittedly, I am new and it's not easy. Nevertheless, the chair must exercise control over a public meeting, not to be autocratic, but rather to ensure successful dialogue. We must and will have order so that all are heard. I am hopeful that all present also desire the council meetings to be more civil, and I'm sure they do. So let's all work toward attaining this goal. As a reminder, we all need to refrain from things like disruptive side conversations, insulting comments, speaking out of turn, high-pitched rhetoric, interpreting a colleague, you know, interrupting colleagues mid-sentence, and restoring to zingers that are kind of just designed to embarrass somebody but not really get any kind of substantive point across. You know, I, I plan on stopping the proceedings if I observe this sort of disruptive behavior. I'll point it out and then we'll sit there until they're finished. And that's how we'll do it from now on in this such a peaceable way. Um, I hope I don't have to do that, but if we have to, then we will. Um, one other point that I should make is that, I, for the record, I may have inadvertently voted to approve the November 2014 minutes when my name was called on the roll. I was not on the council in 2014. It should have not have voted on approving the minutes. So that's an errata and a correction. And thank you, um, Mrs. Devos, for pointing that out to me. Um, let's see now. The rest of old business. Okay, we have the, the first item is to approve executive session and regular session minutes. For January 21st and February 4th, 2015. Um, does anyone want to make a motion to do that? Motion. Does anyone wish to second? Second. second. Discussion. I have um, uh, some comments about the minutes for January 21st and for February 4th. Last meeting, we had quite a bit of debate up here regarding. Um, how we take minutes, whether they be verbatim or whether they be in accordance with Robert's rules where you um, put a gen uh, general comment about what the discussion was about and if anybody wanted to uh, know about the comment further, they can look at our video. Um, the council up here agreed, other than myself and I believe the mayor, that they wanted to stay on track with doing verbatim minutes, with, which are like transcripts, every single word um, uh, anything is put into the minutes. Um, that's really not minutes, they're transcripts, but however, the council did decide that they wanted um, the minutes to be that way. When reviewing the next, uh, th these two past meetings, they're not verbatim. They're, some of it's verbatim, some of it isn't. Some comments were put on, some weren't, and um, I this is not consistent with what uh, these folks had wanted to accomplish with getting the minutes to be verbatim. So I'm asking that these minutes be um, pulled and either we continue to go forward with the Roberts rules of the way minutes should be taken or we do it verbatim and we do it verbatim, everything verbatim. Um, so I would like to pull these minutes and make a decision on how we would like to move forward and be consistent. I had a similar observation that there were parts of the minutes that were verbatim and then other parts that were just summary and then that, that's just the problem with trying to do verbatim minutes. Um, it takes just takes so long. It, it's time consuming. Mrs. Stiltz is typing away in there for days on end. And to what end? Do we really need that kind of thing? Um, I think people acting in good faith you don't need that. I think you need honest minutes that just reflect what the people are trying to get done up here. So I would like to see us go to a where we follow Robert's rules of order and do the minutes the way they kind of say it that we should, rather than try to keep up with this verbatim thing, because I think that's just going to need to hire somebody just to do that. Um, and, and, we, and it's really not consequential. I mean, this, who cares how many ums and uhs and, and things like that came into the conversation? It's just silly. So I would you know, like the council to consider, maybe not to now, not to vote on them now, but to consider the going either to one way or the other but not to have this combined thing that makes makes no sense to me. Well, I think that we've already voted on this. 
We did. So, so um, then we have to strike the minutes because they're they're a combination of both. They're not verbatim. I don't think we should strike minutes. There was some long hours spent on those minutes. We've all reviewed them. We have a vote tonight to take. Either you approve of them or you don't. Uh, you know, they're not again, the data minutes. They, did anyone bring that criteria. to the clerk's attention? Is, is there an mm -hmm. issue? Is there something missing in it that you wanted to have put in to it? Um, a lot of it just is like summary. It says like so and so wanted to buy a new clock, but it doesn't go into the endless debate over buying a new clock. Um, other things are word for word of exactly what, what, what folks were saying when they were here. We need to do it one way or the other. Is what I'm saying. I, I think verbatim is just entirely a well are you referring money, to the word for word on the council discussions and then just comments on the public comments which is what we have been doing we haven't given verbatim on the public comments sometimes on the it is verbatim sometimes it's not i think again we have the right to vote if we don't like them that we vote no but we've already voted on our um procedure on taking these and I, and I disagree with pulling them. Verbatim minutes. Well, I, I disagree with the three three voted for it so it's now our rule. Now if you want to follow that rule let's follow it. If you don't want to follow it let's change it. But here we are. Here's our vote. Approve the regular the minutes for these two dates. So we Regardless have a vote right now. Being not verbatim. I don't think We're, we said they had to be verbatim. I think we said we wanted as much as council verbatim and then uh, other comments. I it was said. just a straight verbatim. We did not distinguish. You may wish to modify them. We can modify it. Right now, however, we have a motion and a second on the floor, so we should vote on the minutes, and then we can go back if we want to do a new policy, uh, make another motion. But why would you approve them after last month? You just said. Well, we made that, a motion and a second. Well, I'm, I'm, finish. I'm not finished. Um, I would like to say that last month, you guys were very adamant about making the minutes verbatim for the reasons of transparency and um, accused me of not wanting to be transparent by wanting to do the minutes according to our Roberts rules. Now, when uh, we are faced with minutes that are not verbatim, you are now choosing to say, well, we're just going to vote on them and then we'll change our policy yet again. So I don't understand if last month you were very adamant on making them verbatim why the decision now to say yes to these minutes when they are not what you asked for last month? Did we make an actual policy vote on it? I have to be honest, like that, that meeting, I, I, can't re out. I can't recall, but if I can just uh, say that um, I do verbatim minutes on what the council on, on the, um, against the agenda, but public comment is normally summarized and I have been doing that way for months. So, um, They've been cherry-picked comments from the public. Some people have more in there than what they than than what others have. So you cannot have that in your minutes. These are the official record of the township, and either they're done one way or they're done the other. You cannot just cherry-pick what you decide to put in and not put in. Well, they are given to us for review. So at that point, if you feel that you put too much in one comment, you can never come back and change it. Or if you want her to add to another comment, she gives them to us beforehand for that purpose. But for that's not the way time. it's this supposed to be. Not, you know. I mean, sometimes under public comment, it takes a little, a few more sentences to get the person's gist across. And that's yeah. all that I'm trying to do. Right. Um, well, you can say um, Mr. Smith had a distaste or had a, or discussed their frustrations with the mayor um, and then you can say Mr. Smith really liked what the mayor said but you can't say Mr. S Miss Mr. Smith called the mayor a loser and then turn around and say just one small thing about the other one just uh, a general comment you are now being specific when you are telling people words that they said so that is not a generalization so either it needs to be one way or it needs to be the other. And if we're going to argue the fact that Robert's rules on the agenda need to be done, we should also argue the fact that Robert's rules on taking minutes should be done. And I am asking for consistency. This is not consistent. This is being cherry picked. And it is not the way the official minutes should reflect. But again, well, I don't believe that I am cherry picking. I believe that I am summarizing. Um, they are my minutes. It's up to me to summarize uh, it, the best I know how. If you want to change that and you want to have public comment, uh, just a, a topic, that's fine with me. Um, <coughs> but uh, as of right now, 
I, I'm summarizing it the best I know how. And again, these minutes are given to us ahead of time. But and like then we can a review half them. hour ahead of time. And no, no, I know. didn't get them a half hour ahead well, of time. An hour, two hours. No, five no, hours. Not a you got them, you know, days ahead of time. We, we I just think got on them February thirteenth. The February thirteenth, you got the January twenty first minutes, and then I think it was was it Monday night. We just got them yesterday, I yeah. believe. Yesterday. Well, and, if you're and not two today. to three business days ahead, I, I one day. It was one day. The reasonable thing is that you, in order to properly read them at because they're so voluminous you need to have the tape you need to be able to listen to the tape and see if what's said was said word for word for word and you know, it makes it almost impossible whereas if it's done under robert's rules you know you have kind of the general context and then that's much easier to, to review so I, you know I, I don't care which way you want to go i just want to make it as easy and as accurate as possible so that it, the minutes you know do what they're supposed to do well, I'm going to make a policy during my report to uh, post the videos uh, the week of the meeting so that you guys will have them for, for the, review. the review. But the, this is something where I think it, it, it's, again, it's the civility thing. Well, we all know that the minutes have, you know, don't have to be like this. They can be the, the way they are in almost every other organization, and we can do this. You know, I'm willing to do it. But let's go. We have to go to our vote. We're in the middle of. I guess I'll call for a vote then on the approval of the minutes. Well, Councilman Del Caro. I vote them. Yes, it's time. Councilwoman McCabe. Yes. Councilwoman Schneider. Yeah. Uh, no. Council President Chesla. Yes. Mayor McKay. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Mayor, um, if you want to just back up, resolution number forty-six to hire uh, Christopher Petrella has to be done. We swore him in, but we didn't do the resolution. Thank you. Do, do we need to read the resolution in, in its entirety? Is that what you're suggesting? No, you can do it by title only. Okay. It's resolution 15-46, resolution of the Township of Wapakon, County of Warren, and State of New Jersey, authorizing appointment of Christopher Petrella as police officer in the police department, pursuant to certified list of eligibles from the Civil Service Commission. Okay? Okay. Yeah. We have to vote. Yeah, we okay. do. Yeah, we have to vote. Um, so we need a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. Um, discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilwoman McKay. Yes. Councilwoman Schneider. Yes. Council President Chesla. Yes. Mayor McKay. Yes. Okay, moving right along. Ordinance number 15 0, second reading in public zero, hearing. Zero 01. Zero 01? No, mm -hmm. 1501. Second reading in public hearing authorizing the sale of a 1986 GMC value van and 1997 HME Central States Pumper to Oxford Fire Company, owned by the township and not required for public purposes. So that's the, um, this is, I guess, the second reading on that. Now, I, have, I think I have some good news on that issue because I was looking in, um, I guess on the internet, and we don't know how accurate this is, but I found, very similar fire apparatus on the internet to what we're selling. Actually, one here that's a year or two older. And this piece of apparatus is, um, they're asking $55,000 for it. So I'm wondering maybe if we shouldn't get an appraisal done on, on the fire truck um, to determine whether or not we can get a much better price rather than give it and another truck up for $6,000. I think, our, yeah, we have to open this for public hearing. And our, is anyone from the fire department here? Because I think uh, those have probably been like with a used car. Your car's falling apart. You bring it to a car dealer. He puts in a lot of money, and then he tries to get his money back. It could be. Yeah, we don't yeah, know. But, but I'm saying that's yeah. what I'm saying. And that, that gives me a little bit of concern. Now, I'll, I'll distribute just this one that you can look at. Now, this is... Uh, Do we have to open it for public comment? Okay, there's a couple things you can do. Number one, if you were inclined to delay it, right. then you could, somebody could make a motion uh, on the ordinance, and then if you don't get a second, it would die. And then if you decided to do it later, you'd have to do it on first reading again and do the second reading public hearing. Um, otherwise, you can make a motion on a second, and 
Well, I guess the motion I, I would like to make is that we give this a little more time, maybe get an appraisal done on that fire engine and see if we can get that kind of any money similar to what they're showing on that. Which but is you're a one comparing year old it, this looks like a, a very good condition truck here. I mean, well, I'm you sure can't the fire compare. department keeps our trucks in excellent condition. I don't know. That's the whole point. This is the truck that, that practically ran into a house. Yeah. There was no brakes on it. Someone is taking it as is. This thing looks like a brand new polished cleaned up truck. Of course it's $55,000. We wouldn't get near that. And you want to spend money on an appraisal? How much money would that cost? I'm sure if you called some of these companies that deal in these fire trucks, they might come in and tell you. Yeah. I just don't think, I think it was something that we probably should have done. No, I, I think our firemen know what they're doing. If well, we this could isn't get more, their they issue. This is the fire trucks belong to the municipality. Yeah, but I'm not a fireman. I don't know. I'm trusting their expertise. So to pull something off the internet seems a bit. Well, Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, at the last meeting, I spoke with the two assistants, uh, fire chief, uh, outside after the meeting, and uh, I asked them about that. Uh, what would it cost to uh, to bring this, uh, you know, apparatus in compliance? You know, what, how much would it, you have to invest? And it was they gave me a rough estimate about thirty thirty five thousand dollars. So now we can have them come in here and uh, verify that uh, what they believe would cost to you know to get this thing up and running again and to be compliant with the state and all, all firefighters uh, codes. So again, it's like purchasing any kind of vehicle. You know, you can buy a lemon. I mean, you can buy something that needs a lot of work, or you could buy someone a car that's in decent shape or in mint condition. It's very, it's the variables are different. You know, it's vast. So we can't just go, you know, base it on this. Um, oh no, no, I, I agree. You know, based that. it on that. But I mean, that's an it indicator. sounds nice. It's an right? indicator. And you know, and I don't have a problem uh, either uh, to bring in, uh, you know, someone, uh, you know, an independent company here and do uh, an assessment on the vehicle. I don't have a problem with that either. You know, to get a true, uh, you know, what would it cost to fix this truck up um, and, and sell it? You know, obviously we don't want to invest the money into it, so it's not guaranteed is. to get the money back. Sell it as is, but you know. If, if those are the kind of numbers they, they fetch, I don't know. We are selling it as is. So we're going to spend money uh, on an appraisal. Um, you know, no one's going to give them the fire department $35,000 to bring their truck up to, to code. So we have a buyer. Um, we have someone that's willing to take it. And I think we should take it. Uh, you know, we're, we need the fire chief. Yeah. Well, um, I, I think it would be worth just exploring it and uh, you know if it's I guess the last meeting we pretty much told um, someone who came up to the microphone I don't remember that um, this was an unused Eric yes thank you um, an unusable truck it can't even be used and now we're saying that it's going to cost about thirty to thirty five thousand dollars to get it running up to snuff so um, we we bought a new fire truck because this was supposed to be something that was not even usable anymore, and yet now um, we're saying it's only thirty thousand dollars to fix it and uh, have it become compliant. Yeah. But I think in the long run, what was that? No, that's you're misinterpreting the whole. Okay. Let me speak, buddy. But I I think it would just be a smart thing to do to just. Yeah. Make sure we're getting um, a, a decent price for it. That's all I'm asking. Is uh, I, I agree to just just have uh, have somebody come in and say, yeah, you know what, six thousand is a good deal. Take it for both trucks. Can we table the second reading until we can get the uh, chief in here, or at least talk to the chief? Are you motioning that? I'm just asking, uh, yes. Mike. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because I know the dealer wouldn't take it from us, would he? No. Okay. Um, are you you're making a motion that? I'm making a motion to delay the second hearing. Until the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the date that you should say? Mm -hmm. uh, March 18th. Um, yeah, March 18th. Okay. This won't uh, penalize our sale of our truck, will it? Does anybody know? I think it'd be more of a hindrance if we were trying to buy it. If you okay. It, yeah. Instead of selling. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay. Do I have a second on that? I second it. Thank you. Um, any further discussion? Lou, did you want to add something? 
you had mentioned you had, when Don was speaking, you wanted to add something. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I think she misinterpreted what I was saying. Um, again, this is these are just rough estimates, but uh, the two assistant chiefs were saying. Now, I don't know. Okay, so um, it's not a bad idea to have a, someone independent come in here, look at it, mm -hmm. you know, find out everything that's wrong with it, and then give us a fair market assessment. To yeah, that's what's worth as is. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lou. Do you need to vote on that? Yes. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilwoman McKay. Oh, yes. Councilwoman Schneider. Yes. Council President Chesla. Yes. Mayor McKay. Yes. Okay, now we have Mayor McKay's non consent appointments that were tabled from the February 4th meeting. Um, these are appointments to the Environmental Conservation Commission. Uh, we had already made two appointments to this, um, Jennifer Leifer and Mark Rao. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, but now we have some more. Um, I'm appointing Gerald Harkin, and he'll be replacing Earl Clymer Jr. with a term that expires December 31, 2016. I'm appointing Twyla Bartlett. Um, she replaces uh, Charles. Warner. Uh, her term will expire December 31, 2016. I'm appointing Laura Nowak. Nowak. Um, she replaces um, Frank Brockerhoff, um, and her term will expire December 31, 2015. And Frank uh, Jankowski, whose term had expired, um, who was on the um, commission, has indicated that he would like to come back and replace his son, fulfill his son's term. And his son's term expires uh, December 31, 2015. So in the interest of continuity, um, we ask that, you know, he, that he come back and, and stay on, to, uh, on the uh, commission. And this commission has not uh, met, I don't think there's any record they met, they didn't have any minutes, so, and they're supposed to do an annual report, so um, Juniper has her work cut out for her here, and we expect big things out of the commission. Thank you. Why is uh, why is Frank not taking his old seat? Why is he replaced? Well, because he, he he expired. So why didn't he just get his new seat for the full term? Why is he taking? Because he didn't indicate a person wanted to be on, so somebody else was appointed to that spot, and then he came back and he Juniper actually contacted him. He said, oh, "I guess I'll stay." Is that pretty close? So he said, "Let me take my." He's seat. He's okay with just the one year. Because now he just has a one year. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't speak to him specifically okay. about which term. I just asked that he was interested in remaining. I had, I had suggested that it would be a great benefit yes. to mm -hmm. the person to be on and that he did express a willingness okay. to do so. So I figured we'll start with that year and with any luck at all, it was great. We'll raise one of the Oh, great. And then I guess um, I'll just need like your uh, information for the, the website. If you When you have your meeting, if you get that all, all together, that'd be great. Okay. Very nice. Now, um, we move on to new business. We have a first item of new business is our 2015 preliminary budget discussion. And we're going to let our new CFO um, take over and give you a little bit of an idea about how it's going in the budgetary process. Sure. Thank you. Hi there. I think we should all do some calisthenics just to make sure we're all awake, <laughs> ready to go. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Before we actually start our um, our budget update, I uh, just wanted to do a little bit of a, a background, just a little bit of a brief history. Um, on February 11th, I distributed our first preliminary draft of a budget. Being that it was my first look at the budget, there were several things that I missed, some of them large things. Um, one of them was the one-fifth note payment for the tax appeal. Um, others were an overexpenditure from last year, um, and also the emergency appropriation that uh, that came from last year. 
there were some interest charges and some debt charges that were adjusted. So uh, those are all effective in the new preliminary budget draft that you have this evening. Um, I apologize for the late distribution, but I just finished it at about 5.15 this evening. Uh, some of the things that we did do for this year so far, um, we had wanted to and had spoken to the auditors about changing the pool to a pool utility. That's a, a relatively, sounded like a long process with several ordinances that would need to be put in place. And uh, since it wouldn't be complete until maybe halfway through this year, uh, the decision had been made preliminarily at least to just put it in as a separate department for this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then to, uh, to set it up effective January 1st for a uh, full utility. Uh, one of the other things was uh, administration and um, the clerk had all been lumped in together. So uh, the clerk now has a, a separate departmental budget and administration is strictly your uh, generalized administrative expenses. The sub-accounts for most of the departments have been standardized so that everyone has the same categories of office supplies and um, dues and subscriptions, education, software, and such. One of the items that um, we took note on at first was uh, our grants receivable. We had uh, about $200,000 in open grants receivable and um, in speaking to the auditor, uh, I've learned that it's been an audit recommendation for at least the last five years, <coughs> and, uh, probably more, that those receivables be cleared up. We were able to, to locate a, a small one for about $12,000. Their revenue was just misposted to a body armor grant. That's a pretty easy cleanup. It won't have any negative impact on uh, our surplus. Uh, some of the other ones we're still searching on. Uh, the larger one is a, a DOT grant for $40,000. We're not sure if it had come in like the other grant and just been misclassified or if um, it's really still outstanding. They, they, some of them may have to be canceled and that will have a negative impact on our financials. Um, the deferred school tax, uh, I think we we're going to talk about it at the, at the last meeting that, that was unfortunately canceled. Um, just a brief explanation on that. Since we're at calendar year and the school is uh, on the state fiscal year, we're permitted to defer one half of the school tax levy. And I'm sure the auditor could explain it in much more technical terms, um, but it is a common practice to defer one half of that levy. I would caution about maxing that out because if the school tax ever should miraculously decrease, then uh, on paper we would lose some, some surplus balance. It was unfortunately a necessity to do that last year because if we didn't, we would have had uh, an operational deficit. That's a, a really big red flag that uh, is screaming to me that our budgeting practices, we, we need a lot of work on them. We need to get a lot more conservative to, uh, to restructure a little. In 2014, we used $290,000 of surplus as a revenue to balance our budget. We only replenished 98000 the only reason that we did replenish the 98000 is because $284,000 of deferred school tax was adjusted. If we hadn't have done that, we would have had an operational deficit and, <clears throat> excuse me, our surplus balance would have only been about $39,000. In our budget this year, we're anticipating either $100,000 or $150,000. So you can see that that would have put us at a, a huge disadvantage from where we are right now. Uh, our surplus balance is uh, alarmingly low and uh, it should be significantly higher than it is. We need to uh, take a long, hard look at the budget this year, our budget practices, and come up with a, a strong surplus use policy so that we can start to rebuild that and replenish it and uh, get it to a more sustainable level to offset taxes like it's supposed to be used to do. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's ever discussed the, uh, the rep before, the reserve fund collected taxes. Is everyone familiar with, mm -hmm. with what that is? Okay. Uh, I was going to explain it for the public. Would you like me to do that? Yeah. Or just, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, the RUT, the Reserve Fund Collective Taxes, is a non-spending appropriation. It acts like in um, a normal commercial establishment, an allowance for doubtful accounts. In New Jersey, it's, it's unique that the municipality collects taxes for all three of the taxing districts, for ourselves, the county, and uh, the school. Taxpayers pay 100% of their property taxes to us as the municipality, 
And uh, unfortunately, they hold us accountable for 100% of that, even though we only receive 17% of that for our local coffers. As if that view didn't make us look bad enough sometimes to our residents, um, we have to charge those taxpayers that, that do pay their taxes for the taxpayers that don't pay their taxes. Um, we have to pay the school and the county 100% of their tax, even if we don't collect 100%. So in 2014, the entire levy was a little over $24 million. It was $24,376,000. We had some valiant efforts from our tax collector, and she was able to uh, collect or have otherwise credited almost $23 million, $22,994,000. That gave us a collection rate of 94%. And while it sounds great, that still leaves $864,000 of uncollected taxes. Since we had to pay um, the school and the county 100%, all of that $864,000 comes out of our small 17% share mm -hmm. of the overall pie. Since we have to have a balanced budget, we have to raise that much more than what we really need to make sure that we have enough to pay the school, the county, and meet all of our own expenses as well. Um, last year, in 2014, our rut was $647,000. In 2015, it has increased um, by over $90,000. We're at $737,000 now. Um, just for a, a little fun fact, that's eight and a half cents on your taxes. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, if everyone in uh, Lopatcon Township paid 100% of their taxes by December 31st, they would have an eight and a half cent conceivable right. tax reduction, not that but it could be a huge, huge mm -hmm. bonus if, uh, if, if our tax collection rate comes back up. There were some extenuating right. circumstances yeah. mm -hmm. last year where things just didn't come in on time. So normally our tax collection rate is around 97%. It tanked a little bit last year. We expect it to come back yeah. up this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, from 2013 to 14, our local tax levy went up um, $449,000 that uh, with a, a cent being last year a little over $86,000, that's about five cents. So looking at our budget for this year, it, uh, it appears pretty certain that we will have a tax increase. Um, that's up to council whether you want to make that the minimum increase that we could possibly get, get away with, or if you wanted to make it a, a more of a moderate increase that would help us get at a more sustainable level um, to have a little bit more efficiency in our, in our whole process. Um, right now, we are trying to look at a, a more comprehensive plan so that we don't have a, a big increase this year and no increase next year. And I think in the past, there were several years of no increases, and that just kind of piles up so that you have a big increase at once. I'm sure everyone would agree that's a lot less easy to manage in your personal budget than, uh, than a small one or two cents mm -hmm. every, every year. Um, so when we look at our budget, it's really important to look at our recent history and understand how New Jersey budgets work. It's a, a pretty strange, strange little beast there. We have uh, two caps on our budget. Mm -hmm. We have one on our appropriations and one on our revenue. In general, the appropriation cap limits our spending to one and a half percent from our budget uh, from last year. Most towns will adopt an ordinance to permit an increase of, uh, I don't know if it's three percent or three and a half percent, it's called the cap rate ordinance. Mm -hmm. and. Um, just passing that doesn't mean that the town will necessarily increase appropriations that much, but it gives them the flexibility that if they don't increase that, they can bank that. They can bank the difference of what they do increase versus what they would have been allowed to increase. That money then uh, sits for several years in a cap bank. So a lot of towns normally accumulate quite a bit of, of money there and it just gets lapsed. It doesn't get used because they don't increase taxes that much. In um, in Lopatcong, we have a cap bank of $172. That's really, really small. Um, to me, uh, it looks like we are maxing out our appropriations each year, and that's why we don't have anything left for bank. I'm definitely not an expert in Lopatcong Township, mm -hmm. um, but that's just a little bit of a, a warning flag that, that we're not saving anything for a, a rainy day, so to say. If we had a big event, like a sinkhole, mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have the available reserves to right. draw from. Um, the other cap is our levy cap, and that limits the amount uh, that we can raise the tax levy, the amount that we ask our taxpayers to contribute to, to sustain our, our municipal budget. The, that cap bank is, is, I'm sorry, that levy bank is available for four years, and our balance in that is negative $207. $207. A negative 
$207. Um, so looking at that again, uh, I'm not an expert in Lupacong, but it would appear as though um, the amount that we're maxing out the amount that we can charge our taxpayers each year. Uh, we're not leaving anything there uh, on the table. So uh, those are two of the reasons that uh, that we're looking to start revamping our entire budget process. Um, we wanted to make sure that we're planning for the future to have a sustainable level of spending and to even out and, and hopefully avoid any kind of large tax increases by keeping everything mm -hmm. as moderate as possible. Uh, another point is that the tighter we make our budget, the less surplus that we'll have to regenerate. Um, at the end of, of each year, you lapse the following year's unspent appropriations. And the tighter your budget is, the lower that figure will be, and the less surplus you'll create and earn. Uh, that cause and effect relationship makes it pretty imperative that we not only budget wisely, but that we try to maintain a uh, healthy surplus level. We do have cash flows issues. That's a, a, another bit of a, a, a red flag. Um, we normally don't have enough money to pay our school taxes on time. If we had a, a more um, healthy surplus balance, we wouldn't have that, that issue where the school has to wait to get paid and, until tax revenue comes in. Um, our current budget draft, as I mentioned, does have a, a pretty small tax increase, um, but because of our very low surplus and the problems that that, that creates, with um, the in inability to, to cover emergencies and the inability to uh, potentially pay the larger bills that we have, school and county mm -hmm. taxes, um, we are looking at an increase that may be a little bit more than the smallest amount that, that we could get by with, to, just to help to rebuild us a little bit. Um, some of the things that the budget draft, again, I'm sorry for the late delivery, but some of the things that, that does not address is the, uh, the sinkhole expenses. I'm unsure of how that's going or where council is with just start. where that is. Yeah, yeah. so um, that doesn't, this budget does not put anything in there to cover the sinkhole or any of the associated expenses, capital expenses and repair costs. Mm -hmm. um, it also uh, does not provide any kind of adequate capital planning. Um, we have $250,000 going into the capital improvement fund. We don't really have a capital program. We're supposed to have a five-year plan. We should have, um, I saw a great fixed asset listing. Can we make something? Yeah, there's, there's not much on it. It's not uh, very detailed. We're, we're not setting aside money each year for a truck or $200,000 for road improvements, just for general paving. Um, we should be making a lot more um, capital plans in, in both our current fund and our, our sewer. Um, bringing up the, the sewer, in the uh, past couple of years, we have been utilizing about $450,000 from the sewer to uh, kind of subsidize our current fund. That's a legal, allowable thing to do. There's, there's, it's not a loan, it's not borrowing. Um, the current fund and, and the governing body is 100% is allowed to take money from any utility that you would have. The problem is that uh, I don't think that the sewer system is, is new. Um, I didn't see any kind of capital planning other than the big, huge project that's going on now. I don't see any capital planning being done for that either. Um, I didn't see anything for cameraing the lines or routing cracks or, or jetting. I, I didn't see anything like that. And those are all things that you need to do to maintain the health of your sewer system to avoid a, a huge, huge project as opposed to yes. uh, a standard kind of repair. Now, had we kept that money over the years in the sewer utility, there would be millions there to do this, but it was taken out over the years and used to subsidize the township's operations. <clears throat> now we have to find a way to put it back, or we have to go out and borrow money to fix the sewers, and that's what's generally been done, is they go out and borrow money to do things or make capital acquisitions on an emotional basis, not pursuant to a plan, of, um, a long-term plan for capital improvements, capital acquisition. So, um, you know, it's all things that we have to factor into the budget. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have a chance to, to go back and add up how much um, was uh, taken from the sewer, but again, it's it's allowable thing to do. Right. Wow. It's, uh, it's not uncustomary, um, but when your sewer utility has needs as well, you, you, you want to try and, and replenish that as much as possible. So that uh, draft in front of you now is trying to utilize as little from mm -hmm. the sewer as possible. We're trying to 
kind of wean ourselves off of, of that reliance. And build reserves up in that utility for future right, problems. Right, to, to yes. have them there. Um, so uh, I just wanted to remind you we're facing a statutory deadline for introduction mm -hmm. of our budget. Um, I was kind of hoping that we would have a couple of budget meeting sessions to, to go over in detail each department. Um, we've met independently the um, finance committee with the department heads to go over their budget, but I know council really hasn't had much input into the, the whole um, budget itself. So um, I don't know what we can do. Our, our statutory you want, would deadline. Would like to have the workshop, uh, budget workshop meeting? That, uh, that would be great. I, I don't know at what point you'll be able to fit that in though because I know. we're kind of up against the, the I clock know. to introduce and I, I want to make sure that everybody's comfortable and knowledgeable and 100% familiar with the budget before it's introduced so that nothing would come up later. It, um, I know I've been I've been spending, uh, I've been going over it and there, or anything I could find from last year and I think you know because I did call the auditors, I sent my stuff over to them and it looks like it changed because originally we had a, a huge deficit and now the budget gap is, is down. So I'll go through because it's the first time I'm seeing this, so I'll go through and see if there's anything that I hadn't yet. Um, <coughs> Explain to to uh, uh, John and Dave because there were a couple other little things that I think maybe we can there might be a duplication here or there and then I don't know if my shade tree is on here but um, I guess they they were able to meet with you to go over some okay that's good and then uh, I, yeah so we could go I've been trying to go through uh, everything line by line um, the one question I did have too was on our receivables the grant receivables I know our our AF AFS from this last year, we have the, the 200 and, what is it, 204, 691, 33 in receivables, but then on the other side of the, the balance sheet, we had, um, I think it was 175, 169, 85 in reserves, and if, I don't know if Paul's, the, the money that Paul has found is in addition to that. I mean, if we did want to start over, it looks like if we get, got rid of the reserves on the one side and the receivables on the other, we'd be looking at, what, maybe like 20? thousand um, dollars if if they could be canceled again yeah if they could again. be canceled yeah because it looks like I mean I was just looking because I was uh, you know just going through and it, um, I know paper has over a million in receivables uh, Pohat has uh, 212,000 uh, Greenwich had 195,000 so I know these are a big problem uh, it, the, the grants are just a very very difficult to manage because sometimes you have to spend the money before you can even get it and you have to spend it in full to the penny before they'll even consider your application yeah. and sometimes you have to uh, put a lot of times paper. you may get a grant a year before you're ready to start the right. project so, like with know, the case yeah. For, yeah for, for Black Kong, mm -hmm. they have a, a large historic uh, trust that's right. sitting and waiting for the project to start and that may not even happen this year so that that would sit there for, so those for are, quite a while and those we don't have to I mean so I, I yeah, know Paul has been helping and you've been doing that, so yeah, I appreciate that. The ones that. that are still active projects, they're, they're not a, a problem. It's the, the older ones that the look ones, like they're yeah. from a completed project mm -hmm. that we should have had a final submission on and should have gotten that money off um, off the books. So. Yeah, it looks like there was a bunch of old ones that totaled like maybe $10,000 that we should probably just wipe out because some of them were like $300. Yeah, don't. <laughs> we'll probably just get rid of those. So I would definitely like to, I mean, if we can't have a budget meeting, I'd definitely like to sit down with you because I did go through, sure. I was going through line by line, and I found some things in the computers and some things in, in garbage and stuff like that, and maybe it could go down a little, but at least it's definitely uh, not something that's going to, uh, I was losing sleep over this. So. Yeah. <laughs> the biggest change was um, for employee medical. Okay. Um, last year it had been budgeted at $510,000. And I, I thought I was calculating it wrong, so I, I went with a comparable price. But I, uh, I did just uh, speak with Beth today. I was thinking maybe I was missing a whole uh, policy or something, but um, that dropped by $160,000. Oh, good. Yeah, the employees' contributions have increased a little, not okay. dramatically from mm -hmm. last year. Um, it's the same percentages because everyone's maxed out at the fourth right. year contribution rate. Um, but since the cost of the plan went up, the cost of the contribution will also go up. I know we had a few people take that payment in lieu of benefits, so that definitely helps us because it's a lot cheaper. Like, what is it, 5000 a person instead of whatever ridiculous amount it is for benefits? <laughs> there's also some pending. Um, there's there's uh, two, uh, two or three pending um, budgets that we have not sat down with the budget owners, so there are still some additional cuts that um, I'd like to make. And uh, we need to, uh, some of those department heads are having a hard time, so we've just put in a budget for them. Um, 
but there are some cuts, additional cuts that can be taken out. We have not gone through all of the HR courses <coughs> and the um, seminars and things that are not a requirement, but we've been um, given the employees the courtesy of paying for. We just, we don't, we can't afford that courtesy anymore. So what we're trying to do is on a need basis for um, for training and, and um, making sure all of our employees have the proper CEUs and credits to um, uphold their certificates. Um, but there are still some additional cuts on that. Um, as far as the grants receivables, we there there was two hundred and four thousand dollars worth of uncollected grants receivables on our books. They've been there since um, collectively um, about since about two thousand and three. I think the first one um, is showing uncollected, and the, the process. I don't know how the process was with the um, collecting of the grants, but there doesn't seem to really have been a process. Um, these grants have been out there. We've uh, we've we've um, got the okay for the grant, we've spent the money, and um, yet we've never gone to go collect that money. So it's been sitting on our books as an open item. And, uh, you know, after it's, it, this has now become a liability for us, they should have been written off. Um, somebody should have researched them in the years that they have uh, that they were. We, they could have been corrected. They could have been found. They could have been, and right now, you probably, the probability of collecting any of that money is, um, probably not a, po a possibility because they're so old and unfortunately some of those things go on an annual basis if you um, if you don't collect it for the year the money is not available to you anymore um, this is a big issue and unfortunately yeah the, the comments have been in our audits for the past five years but not really a red flag was raised or um, or were they written off to um, you know, to, to avoid another tax hike. So unfortunately, the auditor that I, we um, interviewed for the new, for the auditor position, kind of went through our books in a day and found this, sent me an email, raised a red flag to me that, hey, these grants have been sitting on your books for a while uncollected. This could be a two and a half cent increase in your taxpayer dollars. And uh, because of that red flag raised by the auditor that we have not hired um, or where we have not made a decision on, this has come to light and we can fix this problem. But because it's been there for so long, it's unfortunate that uh, a red flag was never raised prior to this. Uh, um, did, he, did he also explain to you the reserves? Yes. Okay. So you didn't mention that last time though. I mean, it's important to know that we have money that also we need to clean up on the other side. And if we just wiped it out, we're talking like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars at the most. And I don't know. Paul's already found probably another forty and twelve might actually be in our favor now. I mean, it's important to note too. And it is actually in our audits. I printed out our audits from the last year. The grants receivable and the reserves. And I know it is an issue. And I know they've raised the red flag every time. They have been very diligent in doing that. I did look at Greenwich's audit, which was done by the auditor you want to hire. It was filed three months late. And he failed to make the recommendation, even though they, too, do have outstanding grants. How, long, how old are their outstanding grants? They Some of them don't have dates, so I don't know. Okay. A lot of them so, don't have dates. So we don't know if they're in the current year or not. It should always be a red flag, though. Right, but it was not ever a red flag raised It was here. a red flag here. It was when, in every audit. It's in our recommendation. Yes, right here, you can ask them. It is. It's a very innocuous um, um, item on the on the comments. And, uh, you know, for an auditor to send an email saying, hey, this is a problem. You need to take care of it. That's raising a red flag. Just putting a comment in the back of the book is not raising a red flag. And some of these things are, you know, $40,000 a piece. Um, they made their comment on the recommendations, which is the part that we looked at. Betty has, Betty has to answer. Our CFO has to answer to and that we do. It's not... Yes, mm -hmm. there comes a point in time where, where to be. right, there comes a point in time where you need to write them off and for t to say that, well, you know, the, the, the comment's been there for five years plus, that doesn't um, fix the problem or also address the problem that, hey, someone here is not collecting the grants in the way that they should be. So uh, there's more than just one red flag that's raised for these, uh, for these grants receivables that um, have not been raised to me up until this point when, um, Mr. Morrison had raised it. Well, it's actually, you, you could have asked our auditors any time what our recommendations are. I mean, they're sitting right in front of you. you I could did, ask actually. Right now. I asked about our recommendations. Actually, it's funny you say that because last year, I asked our attorney, why do we continually have the same recommendations? Well, and you ask them, not the attorney. 
I'm telling you, the com I didn't have a conversation with them. I had a conversation with the attorney. So um, when I spoke to our attorney, um, I asked her the question. She said, well, I called, and they said they're really just small items. There's nothing really to be alarmed about. Um, it's basically comparing how many it was, the scenario was, well, you know, if you have 10 open credit cards, some people say it's bad, some people say it's good. So it's really not a comment that's, you know, something that should be uh, alarming to you. So you, you charge, the township was charged to call to the attorney, for the attorney to call the auditor, when you could have just call the auditor yourself, and he would have explained it to you, probably better in detail. No, actually, no. Um, I don't recall why I was talking to her about the audit. I think it was because you wanted, um, we were signing a paper saying we agreed with the audit, and I was uh, trying to understand that. And she um, offered to make the phone call, and that she could probably better explain it to me. Well, of course, they're going to offer it, they bill us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a billable hour. Sure. I'm just saying, sure. they're, they're right here if you have any questions. I've looked at all, I've looked at all the other towns, no offense to the other people from other towns that are in the audience, but I mean, it is, it is an ongoing problem, it is a lot, and, and when you are short-staffed, it's hard to get to these, and if it's not your, your thing, you know, I'm not going to talk about what the past CFO does. I commend Maureen for her, her diligence and her, her uh, desire to clean these up, and again, if we, if we thought we could and we wanted to, like, remember, in accounting, there's two sides. To the, to the sheet. If we want to wipe out the reserves and the receivables, it, right now it's a very small difference. But that doesn't fix the problem of we are going out and uh, getting grant money, we're spending it, and no one's collecting it. Well, so that's because there's a reserve, the CFO <clears throat> will, will do that for us. <laughs> that doesn't, okay, that doesn't <laughs> fix the other problem. I want to address another thing, which is the deferred school tax. Um, what oh, It's a very... Uh, it's it's kind of a difficult thing to explain, but um, you know the, the state of New Jersey has allowed municipalities to um, <laughs> defer uh, fifty percent of the collected school tax because we're on a January December uh, fiscal year and it's the um, the school is not. We continually collect taxes, and when it's time for them to receive theirs, we they they get the money, albeit late from what I hear a lot of times, but they do get the money um, to keep the school running. However, we're allowed to defer the 50% and um, use that to our benefit, to the taxpayer's benefit, to kind of uh, use it for our shortfalls in our budget. So, you know, if, if we're if we're short uh, a certain amount of money, we can use the deferred school tax to cover that and not uh, pass on that. Um, pass that on to the taxpayer. So it can be used as a good thing, um, but you know, when you've when you've continually deferred it, and um, right now when we pass the resolution tonight to defer um, the remaining portion of our 50% school tax, we have now maxed out. Um, so, which means we can't borrow any more deferred tax money from from the school unless their uh, the tax levy goes up. If it stays flat, we can now not take any more. So next year, when we try to plug in our shortfalls, we will not be able to utilize that. So, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a very touchy year next year, and and what your tax increases may be. It um. You know, it, it, like I said, it's not illegal, but it's something that we've now become dependent on. And we can now no longer use that to our advantage. Now it is um, it's something sitting there that we will need to pay to the school. And if the tax levy for the school goes down, we're going to have to owe some of that back because now we're above the 50% threshold. So that it's an issue that is... Um, because we've drained all of our resources, because we have no more levers to pull, no more buttons to push, we are in a situation that we um, we cannot borrow any more money. So your your tax levy could be in in jeopardy, and maybe next year, the year after, um, you know, it, it's a situation that we really shouldn't be in. To try and and to say it's a common practice, it is a common practice in a lot of municipalities. Um, our auditor sent us a, a letter saying it is a common practice and that, you know, uh, this is okay to do and we've done it before. Um, I don't know how many years we've been doing it and, you know, we can ask that question to the auditor. But um, there, there's a kind of an, uh, it seems a little contradictive because there is an article on their website that says they have a couple of issues with uh, deferring school tax. So I don't know. Um, it's been an acceptable practice for us, but it seems like they do have some issues with it um, within their firm. What's the alternative, though? 
if we were not to do this? Well, you, um, the alternative would have been if you needed to defer some, yes, but um, curb your spending. Try for and this year. For this year? Yeah. There is no, um, I mean, what are, we, we have no alternative okay. this year. We have no alternative. We have to defer the tax because well, we must we begin to be dependent on it. Of these kind of things. We right. must have a comprehensive overall plan for our financial future. And how do we get there? We examine, we're starting with this budget. It's the okay. first time the budget was done in a way that you can probably gain from it. And in the future, we're going to look for ways to pay down the debt. And maybe in an accelerated way, we're going to look for ways to re rebuild the reserves. And refinance them. Yeah. That could be part of the plan. Yeah. But but it's part of it, not the plan. Right. All right. All right. I know, I know. I mean, I've lived here for 15 years, and there's, uh, believe it or not, there's times when I open my tax bill and be like, really, they're not raising the taxes? I really think they probably should, because they're going to get themselves in trouble, and they did. That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's very tempting, you know. Makes you look like a great, great, you know, counsel if you don't raise the taxes, but if you, it's irresponsible. And, and, and we got well, I'm sure Maureen, the Democrat, would have a lot to say about that. <laughs> right. As far as the Republican, uh, <laughs> but no. we won't go there. No comment. All right. So as far as, are we going to try to have a budget meeting or, or, or no? I mean, who do we have? Who do you have left to meet with? I don't know if. You... Um, the, uh, the pool. Uh, we did go over the DPW portion of the pool, um, but we haven't had a chance to sit with Beth to go over the big portion of it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, clerk and administration, we should go over. Mm -hmm. um, I have some questions on some supplies um, in in our, some of our boards. Um, there, um, there's a. I have a couple of questions on some of the other budgets that I wasn't there to uh, be part of the budget process for them. So um, we probably have Lori about maybe four four departments sure, left. Okay, because I've been I've been going through. I've been looking at everything from past, and I did find some things that I think we could whittle down. I don't think we're going to have. Ninety thousand dollars in litigation this year. I mean, last year we went to trial, and I don't think anything is <coughs> going to trial this year. So right. we definitely a little down. I, I see duplicates in computer services. I think the office supplies. We should probably try to round up all together yes. to see how much that might be a little high. Yes. Garbage is. Uh, uh, we're actually going into a new yes. contract now that includes yes. the pool, so that number needs to be lowered. Um, yes. And I think there's something with electricity too. We might be able to lower that. And again, I haven't looked at everything, but mm -hmm. a lot of my changes I gave to the auditors, and they already gave to Bryn. And we've got, uh, you know, I, I, we've sat down with the department heads, and um, when I reported last time, there was some frustration. They didn't really know how to do a budget because they've never been part of our budget process ever. Um, they've actually kind of embraced it, and uh, many of them come in and they're excited to say, "Hey, I can cut this in my department," or you know, "Hey, I don't need this anymore." And uh, you know, we've uh, we've had a little running joke in there that you know you get the gold star for whoever can cut their budget the most. <laughs> so it's been a little bit of fun, uh, you know, doing it, and they're understanding um, their money. They're having a little control, and uh, you know, having some say in what is going on in their departments. And I, it's benefiting the township greatly by uh, having all these folks be part of the process. Yes, yes, pass. Lori, I, I would very much appreciate it if you have the time, if you could find some time. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah, I'll have some time. The, the oh, yeah, back. no problem. I'm sure I'm you could find another 100,000 in cuts. Oh, I try. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. No problem. OK. So thank you for your presentation. I'm sorry, it was so long. Um, okay, new business number two. Is that all up to you? Yes. Um, okay, this is the first reading of an ordinance of the Township of Lepacon, County of Warren, and State of New Jersey, creating Chapter 63 Volunteers, Article 1, Criminal History Background Checks of the Code of the Township of Lepacon. Essentially what this is, is to create a resolution that empowers the township to get um, criminal background checks, mostly in cases where um, the person is going to be working with children or, or elderly. Uh, that, it, it, that, that's essentially it. Uh, it's putting it in, in the proper format that it's coming out of an ordinance this way it's supposed to be done. So this is the first reading on that. Do you need a motion? For motion for first yeah. reading? Yeah, we do need a yeah. uh, motion. Second. Um, discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, yes. you know, you're stating here volunteers. I mean, there's a lot of different volunteers, committees in this township. 
right? And you just stated that this would just apply directly more to people are volunteering just for coaching, you know, dealing with children only. It's an NL. Okay. okay. So uh, what about other farms? Yeah, exactly. What about other volunteers committees? Um, is my what understanding that, that um, the laws of the state of New Jersey do not preclude felons to serve on this kind of committee. So if we found out about it, it wouldn't be any nice purpose to finding out because we couldn't remove the person. So, um, but if it's dealing with children, then if they have problems, you know, in the past with dealing with the children, some of the problems, then we would want to preclude them from dealing with the children. Is that so, so, yes. so, we could, so we can prevent, say, if someone has a criminal record uh, from volunteering at other committees. We couldn't stop that. Uh, I can check that. I don't believe so. This stat, particular statute allows right. you to put little background checks for people with children on the right. take them in the statute. I mean, I can check to see if you can go with other police as well. Because yeah. you just don't know. I mean, you, you have mm -hmm. someone that just came out of prison, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 20 years from under served, whatever. And uh, we're sending one to volunteer in the organization. <laughs> so now, you yeah, know, I just want to be clear with that. There was an you know, attempt in the legislature to do that, but I think it failed. I'm not liking that. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we get, I guess we have the roll call. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Councilman Belcaro. Yes. Councilman Shane. Yes. Councilwoman Schneider. Yes. Council President Chesler. Yes. Yes. Uh, item three, resolution fifteen forty seven, deferred local school tax. We already discussed that. Um, I make a motion that we um, we adopt the resolution. Second. Uh, all in, um, no discussion. discussion. <laughs> I I just uh, one more quick thing. I know we touched on it already. Um, I would just like to say I would like to see us wean ourselves off. We actually can't take any more money at this point, so we have no choice but to wean ourselves off. But I would like to see next year if our school tax does increase that we try not to use the deferred school tax method and try to do other things with our budgets and our spending to curb that. So excellent, excellent thinking. All right. So then we ask for roll call. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman McKay. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Council President Chesler. Yes. Yes. Resolution number 1548, authorizing the engineer to prepare application and authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute the application to the New Jersey Department of Transportation, Transportation Trust Fund, Municipal Aid Program, or fiscal year 2015. Discretionary aid to help construct the roadway improvements that are required to facilitate ingress and egress from the new high school on Upper Belvedere Road. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. 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 Uh, any discussion? This is essentially for the traffic light that we're trying to get the money for. Yeah. Um, okay. Roll call, please. Councilman Del Caro? Yes. Councilman McCabe? Yes. Council Woman Schneider? Yes. Council President Chesler? Yes. Yes. Resolution 1549, authorize award of contract for base bid to Howard um, Bird and Sons for storm sewer work on Reservoir Road in the amount of $31,800. And this is on uh, Paul's recommendation, correct, Paul? Yes. yes. Okay. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? They're going to be happy. Yes, very happy. They are. <laughs> well, go, <cool>, please. <laughs> Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Resolution number 1550 approved, quote, from LMR Disposal, a local company, in the amount of $680 a month for removal of trash and recycling services at various township owned locations. Motion? Motion. Second. Se second. Any discussion? This is this it includes the entire township. It also includes the pool. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Not the residents. No, not, not the, the residents. residents. <laughs> I wish we could pick the whole thing up for six hundred eighty dollars. I don't think so. <laughs> we'll be good. Okay. Um, no further discussion. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman McKay. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. President Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. We skip. We're skipping until eight. Uh, pool membership rates including swim team pool party rates and pavilion rates for 2015. Now, I noticed in my packet that this is a 2014 document. I guess we just use we'll it as a, it. Yeah, an what? Yeah, this is the time of year in March where I come to the council um, and uh, we go over the rates uh, for pool parties, pool memberships, and there's various memberships. 
and the pavilion rental mm -hmm. because uh, in May we do start renting the pavilion. Um, I'm not recommending any changes of, of you know, our base uh, of our operating budget uh, doesn't support lowering the cost. Um, I think that I would, Lori and I had discussed mm -hmm. um, maybe the pavilion rates during the week, Monday through Thursday, although could be dropped a little bit because we don't seem to, you know, most people have parties on the weekends, but we might attract some through the week if we lower the rate a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. We'll encourage you to do that. So, Lori will go back to the rec Right, I'm going to go back to the rec committee. Talk about that, mm -hmm. and also um, on the senior morning. We thought maybe, yeah, we have um, a senior rate Maybe in the mornings we could get seniors to come in mm -hmm. and use the facility. We are, you know, coordinating it. There's someone, you know, a manager on board. Right. Kind of swim team. Swim team is practicing. Great they idea. could maybe use the, uh, the full facility. At a discount and Love maybe it. Love increase, it. Mm -hmm. you know. And maybe the pavilion for a periodic senior zone meeting during the summer months. Right. Yeah. We could give it give it to them. So maybe at the next meeting. Yes, at the next meeting, what we'll do is we have a rec meeting before that, and then we'll uh, we'll go over that. And you're more than welcome to come to our meeting. <laughs> and that might might include some talk about letting seniors use the pavilion maybe one morning a week. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because I don't think well, we have, really, we, have facilities. We're not using we don't typically rent them in the morning. A lot of yeah. camps and stuff use that, so yeah, they could yeah. definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right, so this doesn't require a vote, I guess. No, 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 it was just discussion. It's just discussion. Is there any further discussion? Okay, moving along. Resolution number 1552, approving the emergency addition to our temporary municipal budget for the year 2015 in the amount of $653,500. And we have to do this until such time as we put the permanent budget in place. So it's like a perfunctory thing. Um, do I have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. Second. Any discussion? No. Okay. A roll call, please. Councilman Belcaro? Yes. Councilman McCabe? Yes. Councilwoman Schneider? Yes. Council President Chesler? Yes. Um, yes. Um, resolution 1553, authorizing the extension of the grace period for sewer bills to April 6, 2015. I believe this occurred because there was, I don't know what happened, the or meeting was canceled so they, they couldn't get the bills out. They needed postage. They, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, we couldn't we couldn't authorize the purchase of stamps because we didn't have a meeting. So, okay. And we took measures to help that out in the future. Um, all right. So, um, any, any um, motion? Motion? <laughs> Second? <laughs> Second. Okay. Any com? Any you know speaking? Um, the only thing Rachel wanted me to say is that they should be mailed out right. to Thursday. Tomorrow. She Tomorrow. said, no, hopefully she'll, Thursday. No, she'll be back Friday. A oh, Friday. Okay. So Friday, the, your sewer bills will be mailed out Friday. Okay. Have a happy weekend. <laughs> Until April sixth. April sixth. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Then I might ask for a roll uh, we'll call on that. Councilman Del Yes. Councilman McCabe. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Councilman Chesler. Yes. Yes. Um, resolution 1554 authorizing correct the execution, severance, settlement, and general mutual release agreement. This has to do with an, an employee who has left the uh, township through resignation. Um, Motion. Yes. Second. Second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman McCain. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. <coughs> yes. Yes. Um, next item is to authorize tax payment for the property, tax, uh, tax payment plan for the property known as Block 103, Lot 14. Um, this is, a, this person has approached the township and asked that we put on a special payment plan for a short period of time, relatively short period of time, to enable them to bring their taxes current. It's my understanding that uh, this is permitted for any lot, but only one time for the lot forever. This is the first time for this lot. Um, uh, it's my understanding that um, the uh, tax collector um, thinks we should do this, and so I would ask for a motion. Motion. That was beautiful. <laughs> How about a second? Second. second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay. That's close. 
A roll call, please. Councilman Del Karen. Yes. Councilman McCabe. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Council President Jones. Yes. Um, next item to approve raffle, app raffle application for the Knights of Columbus to raise funds for the Southwick family. Um, motion. Motion. Second. Second. Any, no discussion, right? No. No, no. discussion. Um, all right. Roll call. Councilman Del Karen. Yes. Councilman McCabe. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Council President Jones. Yes. yes. Of course. Yes. Thank you. Um, and I understand that, Bruce, you're involved in that. Yes. The community thanks you. Um, okay, now we have more new, new business, which I had titled New Business Council Items, um, but maybe we're not going to have that title next time. I think we're going to work to not have it. Um, I, I guess at this point, we're, we're dealing mostly with the, um, the hiring of the, um, the accountant or the auditor. And it is... You know, this is a contentious matter, and I, th I think I'd like to begin the discussion by nominating um, Mr. Morrison, who has come in and um, has spoken to us. Um, I feel it's time for us to, I've said this before, and please respect me, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, we've been in the same order firm for 10 years. Um, I'm not sure that we, whose fault, but a lot of things went awry with our finances, and I want to have with me, and I think the council wants the same thing, a firm that is going to be pushing for us to fix all this. It's almost impossible for small towns like this to operate anymore. It's very difficult, especially if you have debt, and we've got too much debt. So our plan has to involve a mechanism by which we, we build reserves, we pay debt, and try to operate the township. Not an easy thing to do. And we need the best help we can get. Um, I don't want to get too much into the details. Um, we've talked about taking money out of the sewer utility, um, and in the ideal world, you leave the money in the sewer utility, and there would have been several million dollars there, and then when we had to fix the sewers, well, we have the money. But instead, we moved it into the township, and, and this is before these, anyone here was on council probably. And, and I think it was at the time thought this is a great thing, we wouldn't have to raise taxes. Well, that's true, they didn't raise taxes, but now we're paying for it. So it's you know, the conservative way that I'd like to see things done in the future is that we have adequate reserves, that we can meet our requirements, that we don't seek to artificially lower taxes or keep them steady, and that we raise them gently, and that we take care of the needs of the community. So, um, I'm, you know, I've made my, my nomination, my motion to hire the new firm. I'd like to hear if, if there's a second. Second. Thank you. Um, is there discussion? Um, I, I mean, I, I agree that you, you do need some change. I, I feel, however, that the pieces of the puzzle, you have the CFO, you have the auditor, and you have the politicians. And politicians have changed a lot. The CFO has changed. Um, right now, I feel like the auditor is the one who, who knows all the history. He, they're, they're the ones who know. And actually, I, I sent them the budget. I was going over it. I had all my changes in there. I wasn't sure of it. I went to them because they know. I mean, previously, we had a $900,000 deficit and we're now down to almost 200,000 and a lot of that you know they, they went over it they understand where we've been where we're going one of the things with the budget and in debt is that they can only advise us what to do both the CFO and the auditor can only advise us what to do at the end of the day we're the ones who vote on it and it's a constant battle which I'm sure both of Lorraine John and and Dave will tell you that they're, they give us a recommendation on the what they think is best for the financial security of the town and then the politicians Politicians either go with that or they do what's best for their political career, and that's a constant battle between the two. So, like, I'm sure <coughs> I know that our previous CFO was constantly tell them one to two cents, one to two cents every single year, and they were like, no, we don't want to be the ones that raise the taxes, so we're not going to do that. So it is a constant battle. I don't, I, and I, I think right now they have they have the knowledge. They're also, I know, um, one of the concerns is. Is, is fraud and I know I think and they could answer to that that they do have a very good history with fraud didn't you just have a big case that you did how much in fraud did you find in Ridgewood so they do, they do have the, the expertise I mean they, they have fraud controls here correct from parking meters mm -hmm. yeah lots of quarters 
They, they always file their audits on time. And like right now, I just feel like they're the only ones who, they have the financial history of our town. They're the ones who have the knowledge at their fingertips without having to root around a lot. Right. Uh, Thank you. I agree with Lori. I think that, you know, it would be to our benefit to keep our auditors in place. Again, we've had a lot of changes this year in the township. And I think that we need someone who, who understands the background. They've given us our, their recommendations in the past. Whether we followed it or not is our own fault. Um, you know, getting an auditor that's from a neighboring town who already filed the audit there three months late, I don't think that's beneficial to us. Uh, so I, I would, would um, prefer to keep the current auditor. No, of course, we don't know why the order was uh, no. could have been the township. But That's right. Could, yeah, we don't know. But, okay, I understand your, your, your feelings on the matter. Um, if I may. Yes, I may have the floor. Okay, okay. Well, well, where um, do you live? I have full confidence, okay. I have, well, let me start over again. I have confidence in our previous CFO, and as I do right now with a new CFO. You have two different people doing things two different ways. I'm a contractor. And I could be on a job, and I could have 10 different guys doing the job 10 different ways. The point is, again, to that, you know, to the finish, to the completion. That's the point. Betty did, you know, even though it was not illegal what she did, it was perfectly uh, within the law. It worked for her, and it worked for the township. There will be people here that disagree with that. However, it still worked. We have Lorraine here. She has a her way of doing it and have confidence in it that it will work. We have the auditors that's been in town, which I believe they've been doing an outstanding job. They've been diligent. Again, I have to uh, agree with Lori that they only can only recommend. After that, it's just like when your account gives you your tax papers, right? You have to, you're the last one to sign off. And, it, you know, you have to review it and sign off. If you have any problems, you go back to your accountant. So, and that's what exactly what's happening here. They're giving a recommendation. Who signs off? It's a CFO. And the mayor and council would, you know, would agree with that. And that's where we place our confidence. So, in order to keep stability in this township, what's going on here with a new CFO, new mayor, we need stability and um, we need the existing auditors that's been in town. The new one that, that, that they're proposing to bring in, to be honest with you, I was not very impressed with, with the interview with him. I was not. To me, personally, he sounded more like a salesman than anything else. That's my opinion. Um, because in the beginning, uh, the argument was, well, after 10 years, uh, they should be replaced. However, he's approaching 10 years in Raritan Township, and he's been in, in another municipality approaching 30 years. So, and I failed to ask because the meeting has concluded, but I wanted to ask him well, what his opinion would be, or I would ask any auditor, what is your opinion of the state saying they would recommend 10 years and should change? It would be interesting to find out what his answer is, especially being in the township for 30 years. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Lou. Um I would like to uh, just comment on, on that. Um, you know, the township they are in for 30 years, if they're going to continually hire him, he's going to continually stay there. Um, it is not his job to say, well, uh, I don't think I should be here anymore, so you have to find someone else. It's the township, if they want him there for 30 years, they're going to keep him there for 30 years. That's what they decided. What this new mayor and what I would like to see as well is to have a change. It's been a while. It's time. Um, to say that hiring a new auditor, a new CFO, and having a new mayor um, is uh, is dangerous is really a, an argument that does not hold any water. Um, our CFO has found and uncovered so many errors, inconsistencies, mispostings, haphazard budget systems, no budget process, and uh, you know we've all agreed that she's done a great job. And so to have a new CFO is a good thing because look at what she's done so far. Um, I was not a, I, I voted no for our, 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 I'm sorry, our CFO. 
I voted no for her. I had some reserves and all these folks here voted yes for her. Um, I stand corrected. I am very glad she's here. I am very glad and happy for the work that she's done and the things that she's unfolded. And no one is saying anything did anyone did anything illegal prior. But what we are saying is what happened is uh, one of the causes of why we are $12 million in debt. There was no budget process. Errors were carried over year after year. Um, things were misposted has haphazardly. You've got this grants receivables out here with, you know, that's been there forever, uh, or collectibles. You've, um, you know, there, we've got clean opinions. We've got three comments in our audits. Um, yet when I sit with our CFO, I can tell you that she said she has never seen anything so unorganized and uh, haphazardly conducted in any job that she's ever been in with the CFO, it being a CFO in a municipality. So, uh, you know, to have a new auditor would be a good thing. Um, it is broken, Lou, as you've said, you know, why fix it if it's not broken? It is broken. We've had issue after issue after issue here. It's broken. We need someone else to come in and to say that, well, he sounded like a used car salesman or, or a salesman or whatever, you know, that doesn't have any bearing on the job that he performs. And if you took some time maybe to go and um, and call some of his uh, folks that he does their work for, you know, you, you may have found that. Um, the, the way things are now, it has to change. This mayor is here. He's a new mayor. He has, uh, as well as I have, some concerns and some trust issues regarding the audits that have been conducted. And, you know, to, to say that you don't want to allow him to try and do his job as a new mayor and to have some folks that he trusts around and some new um, professionals in here is really uh, an argument that doesn't hold water. So I would like to try and have someone new and give this mayor the opportunity to do his job and to do it the way he would like to do it and you know to give clean opinions on our audits when there's so much going on is really not something we need and you know i don't know why we have such clean opinions i really don't understand it when there are so many issues that we've all that we've just uncovered so i'm asking to give someone else a chance and give this mayor the opportunity to do his job the way he would like to do his job. That's all we're asking. That's all I'm asking. I'm sure that's all the mayor is asking. Um, I don't think it's unreasonable to try a, a new auditor. What exactly are you saying the auditor didn't do? Because his recommendations, or everything you just said that Lorraine found, are the recommendations that he made. He always told her not to do the transfers or misappropriations and the grants, and there was another one. Like, what didn't he do? He's right, they're right there. <clears throat> I know, and you know, they're not on the agenda to be here tonight. Um, I don't know, understand why they are they here. They on the agenda. Yes, they were on. No, yes. they were not. They're not on our agenda. No, they are. No, they're, they're not. on both agendas to Where? hire the township auditor. Right, hire the township auditor, not presentation so by the township like auditor. To come here when they're being hired, that's the, the normal practice for the professionals is to come to the meeting where they think they're going to be hired. So well, they can answer any questions. Well, you know, if had we have known that you were going to invite him, perhaps we would have invited Mr. Morrison to come and defend himself as well. You could have invited him. It was on the agenda. It's been on the agenda since last week. It's been on to hire a township auditor, not yes. presentation or township auditors present to ask questions. They're, I'm just saying they're here if you want to ask them questions on their practices. Yeah, they are here, um, okay. and it, it's not. And what's the trust level? What's the trust what's level? The trust level? You said that, that you don't trust them. Why um, don't you let trust me, them? Let me get your stuff, please. Um, <clears throat> I, I think what the trust level is, and that's I don't know if that's the right word, but we see ourselves in the situation where we're within huge debt, um, no reserves, borrowing money from the, from the school system, um, taking money out of the sewer authority. I would have hoped that over the years, good counsel would have come from our audit professionals telling us, don't do that. That's not good stuff to do. Um, and put us on a better path financially. Um, I don't know if they said that and it was ignored. I, I don't know. But I know how it has to be done in the future, and I think all of you know too. 
we can't pursue this road. We must be more conservative in our in our financial dealings. And so I probably would feel more comfortable with somebody that <coughs> I'm rather certain would agree with that situation and put us on that road. And we, we have to restore our reserves. We have to stop taking money out of the sewer utility. We have to cut, start to pay down the debt. Um, we have to refinance the debt. True, if it's you know, if we can do that in a logical sequence, um, and this has to be our biggest um, priority, along with ap appropriate budgetary means. And I think we've got that well under underway. So that that's from my heart. That's what I'm thinking. I, I want to be able to do that. Now I think at this point we should you know we'll go to a vote. I um, you, you know why I want it. Um, if this 10 years is, is too long, I think, just from a businessman kind of standpoint, I wouldn't let anything go that long. I just don't think it makes sense. And I just so let's go, let's go to the vote. Um, any more? Anyone else want to speak? I have a motion to. No, we have to finish this motion. We have a motion in a second. We need to vote. Well, uh, again, we then on on the auditor issue, it's their job to give us recommendations. It's not their job to do our the job. Budget, yeah. So we can't blame the auditor for for that. That's right. Their auditor, the job is to give recommendations, and they did do their job. They did give recommendations, and that is their job to do recommendations. But at some point in time, there has to come a a time where they tell you that if you have two hundred thousand dollars worth of uncollected grants out there, we what are the collectability rates of these grants? Have they been pursued? Um, if not, you need to write them off, and that has not been done. Um, there is, and if it was done, there is no comment saying that it was done. There's been no corrective action that seems to have been done. Um, when I question posting errors, I mean, we're not talking about a thousand dollar item here. We're talking about thirty-five thousand dollars, forty thousand um, dollars. You know, in an audit, these things should be caught. They're, you know, they're 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 high ticket items, and yet they're not. They were not detected, not caught, or if they were, they were overlooked. Do I know? I don't, because there's no comment there to say which way it went. And there are, if there's too many inconsistencies, the um, the way we budgeted, the way we uh, did our books, it, it, there there are things that were overlooked that I found um, in general as we're posting errors that should have been caught by the auditors. Um, they were done in 2013. They were done in 2012. There were. Um, general ledger posting errors and you know there's posting errors throughout the entire budget so it, you know I think it gets to a point of time where you know they get kind of comfortable and there's a comfortable re working relationship and I do believe that we need to have someone else in um, you know like I said Morrison raised a flag he sent me a, an email I've never received an email from our auditors until this year until this this issue was brought to light we, I've never heard from them, and no, I uh, did not reach out to them, but they've never reached out to me. It's their job to reach out to me and let me know what the issues are, and I've never received an email saying there were issues about anything. So for now, to uh, start receiving an email saying, hey, your grants are uncollected from 2014, it, it, it's a little, it, falls, it, it falls, you know, it, it's a little too late. It's too late to do that. Uh, uh, can I, now I want to make a, a comment first, if yeah. I may. Um, the auditor's job is to audit our books. It's not to do our books. They're not in here every week looking at what the CFO posted and saying you did that right. wrong, you did that wrong. At the end of the year, they go through and they do, they give the recommendations to the CFO. The CFO then does the, the adjustments that they have to do, and it is a recommendation every single year in our in our books, and I've, I've seen that. The, then they prepare the audit for us. Then they come, and if you have any questions about the audit, they're usually here, and they discuss what's in the audit. That is their job. Their job is not to tell us how to do our budget. That's right. It's not their. It's not. It's not. It's not their job to tell us whether to borrow money or not borrow money. That's right. That falls on the CFO, and then That's it goes right. to the council. The budget is actually created by the CFO with with the mayor with the consent and, and input of council. That's correct. Nowhere does it say the auditor. They. I feel they are doing their job. I feel that it's in there and. He was trying to, and again, with the grants, yeah, he told you about the receivables. There's also reserves because there are two sides to every balance sheet, and there yes. is money over there to offset those, whether they match, it's not. It's Yeah, they're a mess. They're a mess here. They're a mess. Cohead, Greenwich, Sulphur, towns all over the state of New Jersey because of the nature of grants. Right. And that's, that's what I know. CFO last year was trying to say, like, she doesn't like them, and that's why. 
But that, again, they have done their job to tell us it's in the recommendations. And if you read the whole comments, if you go through the whole audit, you'll see it. I mean, they have the pages where they, they list out every single grant. It's there. It's our job to read that and if you have questions, to go to them. Well, yeah, exactly, Lori. And it is not their job. But when there are $35,000 and $40,000 misposting errors, it is their job to they say they did. So why wasn't it and fixed? The year. Then why because wasn't it fixed? It. So when they I asked about the $30,000, the $35,000 general ledger posting error that I found, it was it was dismissed and it was oops that um, one was done by the person who came in here while while right. the it doesn't matter. and then it, it was by the time she yeah. got back the okay. year it was over yeah. it should have been enough, caught enough but they don't come in on a daily basis to check that enough granularity um uh, we have to vote I i'll call for a vote Councilor del caro no councilwoman mccabe no Councilwoman Schneider. Yes. Council President Chesler. No. Mayor McKay. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. yes. So then at this point I'd like to make a motion to hire Disavatia as our auditors. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? We already had it, as far as I'm concerned. Anything else? No. Okay. Um, the only thing I'll say is that I have been working at the same company now for almost 20 years, um, and it's the same. It's the same thing over there. Part of what corporations try to do is they try to downplay your knowledge because they really want that that smaller salary because the people that know the most get paid the most, and they try to justify that. Well, we really don't need you, and I can tell you that it, it backfires. And right now, I, I feel like we need somebody who has the history, the financial history of the town in their head, in their records, and and that's why I, I have full confidence in them. I have full confidence in, in all these orders. I mean, they they do not. That takes a lot a lot of work to get that CPA and to get that RMA. It's a lot a lot of work. They're not going to throw it away for anybody or do a sloppy job. Well, that's de debatable, and um, it, it corp private corporation is very different. It's very different than what we're looking at right here, and no one's downplaying anything to have someone else make more money. So uh, that's totally irrelevant. That's an irrelevant comment. That I was you just, just giving made. you an example of how corporations try to justify getting of course they do experience sure and you're I, trying to justify it by we need change and I think right now we need the no I'm not justifying it by change and I'm not questioning their experience what I'm questioning is the way things have been run in this township and it is time for a change all right Alan. Let, let's hear the vote okay yeah Councilman Del Caro. before I vote I just want to say that there is a uh, Councilman Schneider's arguments doesn't hold any water in anything you just said about our current uh, auditor. Okay? Um, so, I haven't said that. I vote yes. It's an incorrect statement. Councilwoman McCabe. I vote yes. Councilwoman Schneider. No. Councilwoman Schneider. Yes. No. Okay, we got by it. Congratulations. You're still here. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> It is a disgrace. Uh, so we're not going to discuss the bond thing. We'll do that at the next meeting, the bond refinancing, and we'll yes. go on to the volunteer policy discussion. Yes, volunteer. I don't know what this is, but what I was given okay. for this was a copy of about a five or six year old volunteer <coughs> policy um, that I didn't know what why we were, I got that. There was no indication it was being updated, and I suspect that. Um, Maureen, you want to update that? I put this, to? yes, I put this item on the agenda and it stayed. Um, my issue here is that, you know, we have some valuable volunteers in this town, uh, and it's not to update the, the current policy, but to ensure that um, we treat our volunteers with respect. So recently, one of our volunteers who does a lot of work for this town and has worked for this town for over 10 years, who reviews records in the office was told by the mayor that she now has to review her records in the kitchen. So I believe, first of all, it has to be decided whether he has the complete control to make a policy like that single-handedly without consulting the governing body, the council. Uh, I think that that is a blatant disregard and disrespect <laughs> for our hardworking volunteers. Someone has 
records that need to be reviewed, they are in the office, and that's where they should be reviewed. No one should be banished to a kitchen for political reasons or for any other reason. I think that uh, if we're going to be trying to uh, work together here, I think that that policy needs to be overturned, and that person needs to be allowed to review records in the manner that they've been reviewing uh, for their uh, prior time here, and they've been here for a very long time. So this is my issue. This is a disgrace that, that we're treating a volunteer like this. Okay, may I respond to that? Yes, please. Okay. Um, it's my view that the internal records of the township should be only accessible by elected officials and township employees. I check with our council on that, and they, they concurred with me. Um, the, the situation you're speaking of, no one was told to go to the kitchen. I believe that there was requested that they work at the, some, a table out in the lobby that you can see from the glass windows. And that would be a, a good place to work for all volunteers so they don't have to go back into the um, into where the um, the records are and such. Well, this person needs to access the records. I think the person you speak of looks at deeds, uh, not deeds, uh, uh, leases, to determine whether or not the amount of increase on the leases is within the um, ordinance that we have for uh, rent stabilization. Is that correct? I would have to confirm with the rent leveling board person, but again, I think that's what it is. Uh, not, not exactly, you know. Well, then what about the LAA treasurer? Um, if, if we're making policy for one, we need to make it for all. So when the LAA treasurer comes in here and he wants to go over his bills, they're going to have to meet outside of the CFO's office in order to be fair. Otherwise, we're going to be accused of discrimination. Oh, yeah, and it was never otherwise. It was said that that's for the volunteers. So Absolutely. then, but he has been back there. Not to my knowledge. They come in all the time. And the same thing with, unfortunately, with Gary, our planning board uh, chairman. He should not be allowed back there either then. I mean, it has to be across the board. I, I will ask Mr. Labor to speak to this because I had, did, did consult with him at the time. Well, listen, the mayor runs the day-to-day -day operation of the municipal building. If the council, since you're the legislative end, if you want to develop policy or amend volunteer policy, <laughs> say, a lot back right. or whatever. I will say this that you know you have to obviously apply consistently. So yes. if there are other people that are allowed back there, obviously can't have that because everybody has to be treated mm -hmm. the same. So mm -hmm. it's a policy determination for the mayor and council as to whether or not letting volunteers or whoever else back behind the counter is, is wise. And then once you do that, whatever decision you make, you do have to you gotta apply it. All right now when we spoke I think it was kind of the consensus that that's not generally a wise thing to do because yeah, there's litigation issues and legal issues. Well, it's not generally a waste of time. It's not really a policy decision for you, but it's... Not employees, not elected officials have access to um, all township records. This is this person's job, to access the records. She only has to access the copies of the leases, to my understanding. Which, which is accessing records that are kept in the course of business right. in this township. You box and you put it, and you sit here, and you go sit at that table. So relegating someone to the kitchen, someone who's been working this job. Nobody said the kitchen. You're doing the zinger thing. Oh, no, seriously. No, you know what? This policy is upsetting. It's not a zinger thing. This is my opinion. And and I, I feel that this person was targeted, and I think it's discriminatory, and I disagree with it. And I think you should take that policy off. We need to be consistent one way or the other. It's either all volunteers or no volunteers, and that means absolutely no volunteers. And it means so anybody who does not get paid from this township cannot be back there. Friends, Friends family, family, anyone, ex-councilman, anyone. That's fine by me. And that means, though, when here's the thing, though, when they do need to access records, some of those records can't leave. The, the view of the clerk, which means now the clerk has to leave as well with no, the no, records. No. The, the table that I speak of is clearly visible through the windows. But if she's sitting down, she can't see, so now she has to stand. What is she right. supposed to be looking at? She needs to make sure they're not taking the records. Yeah, they're not taking them. Yes. So we let mm -hmm. them sit in, in the place where all records of the municipality because, are kept. Yeah, because if they and take them, they'll open. see them. And in I, I just open view. I mean, you could argue that our volunteers actually are employees because some of the things that are in the volunteer policy, they're actually covered under our workers' comp. They're, they're not paid. They're not employees. The, the volunteers are township employees. They no, they're not. They're treated as employees. Paid that, would, that would include the fire chief, too. I mean, technically, well, he's a police. He's a police officer. But if he wasn't, he wouldn't be allowed in here either. In behind the counter, fire not fire in the building. Township employees. Mm -hmm. the same not just behind account. the counter. We're talking behind the door, too. No CFO. That's no fine. Back there. That's fine. 
So, but then, and then that leads you to, you need to give them an area that's comfortable to work at. Well, I, you know, I quite honestly, I don't see, I, I see Gary in there a couple of times in a couple of weeks. There's been maybe one or two times he's been in there. Um, I haven't seen any other volunteers come in the building except for this one particular person who comes in two and three and four times a day. Are you here 24-7? Um, I am here in the building a lot, yes. yes. And when I do come, uh -huh. that person is here. So, yes, I am here, person Maureen. Has work to do. Uh, and the really person, it's not us to question. That's right. It's not. But when they're answering township telephones and helping employ and helping residents, that is now uh, beyond the realm. And, you know, employees are having issues. If you talk to the employees within the building, there are many other facets of this problem that then just coming in and accessing the records. There are other things that have gone on. And, you know, if you'd like to have this conversation, we can have it. I'm having uh, it I, right now. Okay. No, well, that's fine. Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's other things that are going on here with this. And it is not... Um, it's not a political anything. It is a reason. It is there are things here that are going on that should be. So well, here's the problem. One policy needs to be made by council, so we need to vote on it. So anything that's you know, and it, it needs to be applied consistently. So we need to figure out a consistent policy, or we will be we will be hit with a, a lawsuit because the person in in question is a senior citizen and she's also a female. Sure. So, Yep. Yeah, you're talking discrimination laws. I here. actually have a, a problem with this whole entire volunteer policy and procedure manual that I'd like the attorney to review it because there are many things in there that should not be long in a volunteer policy and procedure manual. So I'd like to actually have this whole thing looked at by our attorneys before any decisions are made for anything. Well, if there's things you feel you don't want in there, perhaps you could look at them before we spend the money to have them. Well, there are legalities. You can't just take and add things to a policy without having a legal opinion. Right, but... By an attorney. Yes. Our attorney years ago. Right. If I could just, you yeah. know, let you know. And we do have a recreation policy and a, um, a policy that we hand out to the people who work at the pool that might need to be reviewed also. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's this policy calls for drug, drug, you know, testing of these employees, um, having a testing of the employees. Well, because um, I'm not then on the police of these volunteers, and I, I don't think we. I'll defer to Mr. Layer. I don't think we can have volunteers. Well, we have volunteers that work drug tested, you know, that work that in the use coming in the office. Equipment. Yeah, the LAA that uses our equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Like in that case, mm -hmm. yes, but yeah. this is kind of broad. I, I, I'm not a lawyer, but. Well, I agree with you. I've said and I, I, all I'm trying to do is keep the records of the, the records safe and let the public know that who they're dealing with are people that are employees of the township. The volunteer in question has been a volunteer for over 10 years. The records have been safe all that time. Suddenly it's an issue. So we just need cons some consistency here. Some consistency. It's to our attention, so we need to have some consistency here for policy. Are we going to make a policy to not allow any volunteers um, behind the double doors or into the clerk's office? or well, No, the clerk's office and, and, and where there are documents that the public should not have access so to. We're, now, we're putting right. someone in a so hallway then, so where then the public we take, are coming in and out. Wouldn't, it be, the wouldn't it be a safer idea just to have no one behind the counter so there is no question on anything that is being done back so there? Then let's take our records out to the hallway. So the public's coming in and out? Yes. That's well, you know what? Per perhaps there's another area we can designate, okay? Perhaps there's somewhere we can find. But Maybe I think we, we need to it discuss it first before we just right. allow people so to come and go. we need to figure out our policy. And until that point, I think that it should be as it is now. And then when we determine a policy and where we think they can go, and, and again, looking at the records, because there are a lot of records that can't, can't leave um, our clerk's. Well, you know, I right. have to so protect the employees in, in the building also, and these employees have come to me on multiple times uh, with a lot of complaints. Okay, so, uh, you know, we do need to protect well, our employees. Well, we still need to protect our employees, and they don't feel um, safe in their offices. They don't feel that, uh, you know, they can... Right, that's uh, a whole different uh, thing. Yeah, that's a whole different thing. Again, we can't single out one person. That's right, we want, cannot. Then if that's you want right. to press charges against that person, you take another avenue. It no. Would either, so all volunteers or no volunteers. I think it's smart business just to not. Then for everybody. Then make up a policy. That's right. And get it put in. And we have to vote that's on the policy. That's what I said. Exactly. For everybody. Right. That's exactly so you, what I said. Okay, well. Uh, until then, mm -hmm. then the, uh, 
remain right now as status quo. Do you understand that the employees have had issues and that's okay with you? Have they that's filed complaints? Issue. They complaints, have a, any formal complaints? Uh, no, no, okay. Enough discussion on this okay. issue. Um, so then is that, that until we determine a policy and put something in place, then the, the, the sanction that was put against one person is lifted? Is that, I yes. don't know. Like, yes. I don't agree. Well, you have to be consistent. Whatever you do, you, you have, have to be consistent. consistent. Either everybody's that's allowed right. behind there or nobody's allowed behind there. That's right. That would be the only thing I would say. Right. You have to be, whatever the policy is. That's what it was. It was. Yeah. Well, I think uh, the policy other people was. Other people, the best, I don't know. I'm not there, but that, that was the policy. And that was Mrs. Diltz's policy, I understand. Yes. Mrs. Diltz, didn't you have a policy that forbade anyone from going behind the... Uh, Glass doors there, unless they weren't employees. Or not employees. even employees. Even we employees have, weren't we have allowed. On that? Um, I, I well, you know, I was told there was that. Uh, was the I've had policy. numerous. If I can just say, I've had numerous volunteers over the years that I meet with in my office. Um, the planning board chairman, the zoning board chairman, um, you know, the rent leveling board chairwoman, uh, the fire chief actually uses a desk in my office. The police officers. Um, the, the emergency oh, squad representative comes into my office and goes into the CF office to do business. Um, in fact, uh, Mr. Imhoff, who wanted to view my uh, minute records, I felt much more comfortable that he come into my office and view them under, you know, where I could see him, than to send him back to the kitchen. Or somewhere else where I couldn't see them. No one was ever so, sent to the kitchen. They were asked to go no, to the No, I'm table. just saying I wouldn't want to send him to the kitchen. I needed him to be in my office so that I could watch him. I could answer his questions because he didn't have questions. And I even said to you the other day that I would I would invite Juniper in because if she's working on her agenda and her resolution, rather than her stand at the counter while we're working trying to, you know, take care of business, you know, to set her up and answer her questions as we're waiting on the public. You yeah. shouldn't have to, though. Well, uh, all right. not for yeah, hours. Yeah. At we're going to formulate a policy yeah. like this. Yeah. There needs to be a, a time, amount of time. I mean, the planning coming. board always has their, um, you know, We can't have people that are in there every day four times a day. That's, That's not. Well, I had talked to you we, about we it, Mayor, and I suggested that you think you know, maybe a couple times a month during a certain time period, that could be something that you could accommodate the person with. I did talk to you about it. Yes, and now it's here, and we're talking about it in, in the full glory of the council. I, mean, I personally think the volunteers should be allowed there. I don't want the LAA treasurer to have to stand in the hallway. I just don't. Listen, let's let's work up a policy, okay? What I don't want to see is anyone being targeted. That's not going to happen. That's right. Not as long as I'm here. So let's stop with that. Let's create a policy that's going to be uniform. It's going to be fair for all our volunteers. Okay. That's it. All right, Lou, you, you're going to undertake to create the policy and bring it in. <laughs> he who mentions it. <laughs> Lou, I'll help you with that. I think we should all be a part of that. Yeah, we will be all yeah. be yeah. part of this. We must have organization and... All that good stuff. All right, now we have a consent agenda. Oh, we have the approval of the LA bylaws. Oh my God, I missed that. Yeah, the approval of the LA bylaws revised by LA on 2-24-15. And essentially, what I see in here is that you have changed the mechanism by which people that are elected or want to be elected into positions in the LAA. They did uh, two changes. One was because they do want control over who they select for their board of directors and they've wanted that for some time. And then the other one, the big one, was the, the fundraising. Um, they made they made a decision that they wanted to approve every single fundraiser and then they came back and realized that they do fundraisers like you know, selling you know M&Ms at a game. They don't want to have to wait for a meeting to do that approval. So they're going to submit mm -hmm. their budget. In that budget they're going to put what they what their fundraisers are and what they're doing, and for special <coughs> for special fundraisers, then they'll they'll go to the board, the LAA board, and get approval for that. So those right. are the two. And right. I know um, Maureen is the uh, now, now the, the one about the appointments um, that was like under Steinhardt's days. He he made all those. Yes, and they were and not. Now happy you, you want it taken away so that. Um, it goes to who? The council? It go, it's actually going to be they, the board, the LA board is going to ultimately make the decision and we'll just approve their decision. Unless we feel, and then if we don't like it, we'll send it back and then they'll pick another guy. It won't be our choice, it'll be theirs. 
Sounds fair. Um, Since they're involved in the sports, they know. Yes, they have to live with one another. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a motion to approve these revised bylaws? Motion. Second. Second. Discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Delcaro. Yes. Councilman McCabe. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Council President Jesler. Yes. Yes. Okay, now we go to the consent agenda. Now, I'm going to read them all, and then we'll vote them all in at once. That's how we try to do the consent agenda in the interest of time. Um, Thank you. <laughs> all right. Now, we have a proclamation commending Norwest Cap on the occasion of celebrating its 50th anniversary of community action. And these things will be proclamations, I think, will approve on the website. Right, the website yes, eventually. yes. All right, so we won't read them here. They're very long. Yeah, they are very long. Proclamation for recognizing Congress uh, for designating the third full week in March as National Poison Prevention Week. Uh, National Poison Week, which I kept saying. <laughs> but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> um, resolution 1555 to authorize refund on tax sales certificate number 2014-078 and premium in the amount of $4,024.56 on block 142 lot 6. Uh, resolution number 1556 authorization refund on tax sales certificate number 2014-071 and premium in the amount of $1,403.42 on block 135 lot 14. Resolution number 1557, authorized refund on tax sales certificate 2013-040 and premium in the amount of $2,475.78 on block 136 lot 17. Approved donation of individual pool membership requested by the Greenwich Township PTO. <clears throat> Approved donation of an individual pool membership requested by the Bloomsbury School PTO. Um, I might have to look, I don't know if I can vote on that. My son in law is the head of the Board of Ed in Bloomsbury. Does that make good content? I think no, that's you the can PTO. just vote on that one separately and then you can. All right. Um, Okay, so we'll hold that one aside, that one about this, number seven. And approve payment to delaying contract in the amount of $62,536.27 for work completed on the Route 57 pump station project. Okay. Um, Motion. Second. Second. Any, Mayor, any? Just on number eight. Yeah, I sir. noticed in the agenda package tonight that the certification form for item number eight that the sewer engineer needs to sign is not signed. Oh, it's not signed? Can we do that pending his signature? So, I believe yeah. we did sign it and it sent. Okay, I just yeah. want to make sure. Right. So you have the signed one? I believe so, yeah. okay. okay, thank you. I think we're going to just acknowledge that. We won't get paid until it's signed anyhow. That's it. <laughs> okay, so any discussion other than pool? No, good, okay. Um, motion. Oh no, we did motion. Oh. Um, roll call. Yes. 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 Now number seven. Oh, I, I, well, I'm still we're putting we're them. Number seven we're doing separate, right? Yes. Doing All right. Seven, now number seven is the pool donation of the individual pool membership requested by the Bloomsbury School PTO. I'm a, I can't be involved next to my son in law is the, is the president of the um, um, motion. PTO. What? Second. Discussion? Yeah. Local. Councilman Del Caro. Yes. Councilman McCabe. Yes. Councilman Schneider. Yes. Council President Jesler. Yes. Abstaining. All right. Moving right along. Council reports. We, we all hope that they are brief. <laughs> uh, I'll make the first one, I guess, um, on the sinkhole. That's kind of old news now. But as you know, there was a very large sinkhole. Um, and I was very, very pleased with the way the township uh, employees, engineer, his, his designees, and everyone worked together to remediate the situation. Um, the thing was about as big as a three-car uh, three garage, two stories. That was the cavity. Plus, it had a throat that went down about 50, 60 feet. It took 19 cement trucks to fill the throat. Yeah, and then they had to put back in the soil, compacting soil, and compact it down, and then like 12 inches, no, six inches at a time, and compact it down. 
until they got to the level where the, where the sewer pipe was, laying new sewer pipe in because that got smashed. And when the truck hit it, and then do the same thing, go up a little higher, get the water pipe, put that back in, reconnect everybody's water. There's a lot of stuff going on there. Um, for some insane reason, it became national news, and I got calls from people in California. <coughs> One of the families that was right there by, by the, by the, their house was right there facing it. They're from Utah. They, they, their phone rang off the hook all day from Utah. People saw them. So it was, that was interesting. But anyhow, everyone did a really good job, and I was very, very pleased with it. Um, now, of course, we have the bill. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, it's our position, of course, that you know, it was the water leaking. We should have to pay for that. Uh, we did lose the truck. Of course, we all know Brian's okay. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing. Um, I think he must have felt a bit like an astronaut falling into that ditch and facing straight up. And he, the way he describes it to me, the, the back of the truck where the, um, the salt spreader is, that started to crumble from the weight of the truck. And he's like this, and he thought he was going through it, down into the throat, and he thought he was finished. So he, how he get out of the truck, now we all know Brian's a very small guy. He, still, <laughs> now, he had to open a door against gravity, get out onto the, onto the cab, somehow climb over the cab, and then jump to safety. Amazing. Yeah. It was a miracle. But anyhow, um, we got through it, and all the nice people on the block came with cookies and cupcakes and coffee, yeah, bagels. One guy came with three Joe, Mr. Joe, those Joe yeah. things from yeah, Dunkin' Donuts with, with bagels, and, and he must have went for 70, 80 bucks just because he was so happy to see everybody out there. Yeah. So real good job from, from all the employees, volunteers that were at the sinkhole scene. Now I was proud of them. So that's my report. Um, next reports. Anyone else got reports? Um, I'll, I can just go uh, quickly um, for DPW reports. Um, we are very thankful that nothing major happened to Brian. He was a little sore. Um, he was right back on the scene, as Brian would do. Um, and I am just thankful, and I'm, just, I'm very thankful that he wasn't hurt or injured in a big way. Um, the truck was hurt and injured in a big way, um, but thankfully it was one of our older trucks, so I'm kind of happy for that. Um, right now, we're not replacing that truck. We are, um, as Mayor McKay said, we're waiting to see what happens with the bills and um, who is responsible and, um, you know, insurance and all of those things. So we're down a truck right now um, during these months of still sh snow and uh, sleet and hail and everything and that they've got to go out and, and try and get this done. We are down a truck. So if you can please just be a little patient with, um, with the guys plowing the roads here. Um, as far as the uh, task force, I did send out uh, a proposal for another IT person um, just to compare to what our current services are. Um, he did send that in, so I sent it all to the council members, and hopefully everyone will take a look at that. And if there's any questions, please feel free to ask, um, to call him, to call me, send me a message, whatever you may need to do to, um, to understand his proposal. And... I think that's all I have for tonight. I do have one question for the tech guy. Um, I called him today. He, we're, if um, in order to make it comparable to our current guy, you're going to have to get a quote for email hosting and also web hosting because that's not included in his quote. Um, yeah, well, you know what, our, you have to get the receipts, I believe, for our guy, our, yeah, our, our, it was under, because um, we don't have a contract. Our, his bid did only include an hourly rate. I can get you numbers. It was under ten grand for everything from him for for. Uh, for our current uh, computer guy. Okay. Um, yeah, and, uh, and all the computer supplies and everything too to get a rate on, uh, you know, what would, how much his supplies would cost versus what uh, right. our, our current one is. So, so yeah. yeah. Our current costs from um, our, our guy, he's one twelve and five dollars an hour. Um, within that, the money that we paid out to him are our computers, the actual hardware. Um, he does have his uh, Antivirus in there, web hosting, email hosting, email archive. So okay, yeah, that's what we need. Yeah, we just uh, yeah. If I I'll um I'll get some detailed report reports on that and see okay. if we can come up with some kind of comparable uh, before next meeting. Okay. Lou, I'll keep it short. Uh, we're waiting for two things. Uh, uh, one is a permit from the state of New Jersey, so they can continue digging uh, right across uh, the exit ramp of 22 that goes on to Roseberry Street. Right now, they're stopped right at the curb there in Hillcrest Park a lot. And that should be in uh, any day now. And then the next thing is uh, the pole to be installed from uh, Verizon. Um, the time frame with that would be in the first, second week of March. And then uh, the hookup. 
So do we still uh, have the temporary pump running? Are we still we that's a, we're so bad for that too. Yeah. Well, right, I think exactly. But uh, you know, I, I think listen, I, we see the light at the end of the tunnel right now. You know, so like we're good. Light. We're good. Okay, that's you, love. That's it. I know. Uh, one more thing. I know Baltimore. It's a real mess now. Uh, yeah. I mean, it just gets worse and worse. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, it's uh, worse during the tunnel. You know, the asphalt companies are still closed. You know, they'll probably open up. Obviously, after the snow melts. In June? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look outside, there's a foot and a half. Uh, hey. Maureen, my turn. Okay, I have a couple of things. Uh, EDAC committee, we do not have a meeting in February due to weather and scheduling. So we will schedule a meeting later uh, in March. Don't forget, we still have our look, shop low pack on cards available for $5. LAA, we had a meeting last week. I was unable to attend. <laughs> due to previous uh, scheduled appointments. So Lori attended and she'll give you an update later with her report. Um, additionally, I met with some senior citizens uh, last month uh, to discuss their concerns and any issues that they may have. Uh, one of the issues that they had uh, was that their fire hydrants in their development were being covered by, um, by their own private snowplow company um, being covered up and, and unable to be seen. Um, we had uh, call into Kathy DeVos, got that taken care of immediately, and she had it remedied right away. And in this day and age, there's a lot of fires out there. This is an important thing to make sure uh, it's in sight and uh, doesn't delay if there is happens to be a fire. Um, another issue we talked about was with snow shoveling. And I really didn't think at our March meeting I would still be talking about snow <laughs> shoveling, but I am. Um, what I'd like to do, and, and, and if this snow ever ends, maybe next year or soon, set up some type of a program where our senior citizens can call in to maybe the clerk or be directed mm -hmm. to somewhere somehow to say that they need help, that they, they need to be shoveled out, um, possibly work with the Boy Scouts, possibly yes, get a, a connection mm -hmm. yeah. to do good, that. Good, good plan. So yeah. we'll, or, girls, yeah. or, well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Not if brownies, whoever like wants to shovel, it doesn't even have to. <laughs> Not be. brownies or cups. Boy right. scouts or cups. <laughs> Meet some meat behind the shovel. Right. So <laughs> whoever does it, they can get their free credits, and the senior citizens would be truly grateful. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, I also I'm putting together a list for the senior citizens of discounts in the area uh, from restaurants, um, stores. Um, diners, things like that, and, and once I have it completed or substantially enough, we'll put something on our website so that the senior citizens have access to see what's out there and what's available. Some people are not, may not be aware. Um, lastly, and you may have seen this already on our, our website, but the senior citizen, the senior freeze, they call it, is, is out for the 2014 requirements. It's on our website. So if you're a certain age and you need a few other requirements, you may be able to have your um, taxes frozen. So I have a few copies if anyone's interested. If not, it's on the website. Uh, and, and also, please contact Rachel with any questions um, regarding that. Um, lastly, I am also happy that Brian, who's not here tonight, that he's okay and well. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, lastly, I just have one short statement to make um, concerning our last meeting. Um, our last meeting was a tough one, as all of you know. Um, I was extremely concerned with the attitude and the actions of the mayor in our last meeting. He'd consistently shown some disregard and contempt for our fellow employees, our valued volunteers, and even members of this council. His actions at our last meeting were unacceptable and showed a complete lack of control and a complete lack of respect. I was, as was everyone else up here, elected by the residents of this township. We have all earned the right to be here. I do not appreciate the actions of a mayor who claimed at our first meeting that he wants to work together as a team. But every action he has since taken and continues to take, he's showing that he wants nothing to do with the team. He wants to be in complete control with no other members, opinions, or votes involved. The mayor has created a toxic work environment. He has created policies that seem to have no better purpose than to disgrace or humiliate people. Constantly requesting of our township attorney, where can he make appointments, decisions, and create policy on his own and without consent of the members of council? These are actions of a dictator and a bully. He continues to play these games by pulling off items off the agenda that are requested to be there by council. Again, he wants complete control. These meetings have become a chaotic spectacle. The township meeting should be a chance to get work done, 
share different opinions respectfully, and find out what is going on with our residents and assist in any way we can. This has got to stop. We need to have respect for our mayor and from all of us to work together. This meeting tonight seemed to go very well. I'm happy with that, and I truly hope that in the near future that we can build bridges instead of putting up fences. That's all. Am I up? Okay. Shade tree. Uh, we met. Um, we had our first meeting this year. Uh, Joe Bickler was uh, elected chairman. Victor Camperine is the vice chairman. I've talked with Alex down at the state and assured him we will get back to approved status this year. We did manage to submit our report in by the deadline. I think we had two days after the meeting, but uh, Joe did a really good job of coming in here and getting that done. We still have the grant money available to us. We have $3,000 that we can utilize until April of uh, 2016. Um, so we are looking to get the forestry management plan finished soon. We're looking to see, though, how much we can do on our own so we don't have to spend that money. We can put it somewhere else, but uh, we're, we're going to discuss that at our next meeting. Well, I'll, I'll update the ordinance the next month, too, so we're back in compliance with the state ordinance. Um, which also, just as an aside, the Environmental Commission ordinance has to be done too, so I'll do that. So we're in compliance with the state with that. Um, recreation. Our goal this year is to raise money to go towards a bathrooms and a snack shack closer to the baseball fields. We have a lot planned. Um, it's going to take us a while, and hopefully eventually we might have some money to do this. Um, you know, from the township side too, and some grant money and just and just donations. We also want to start a thermometer. We're going to figure out how much we need and get one of those thermometers and paint it when we get some more money so we can track our progress and get everybody involved. There's a lot of interest in a dog park. If there are any volunteers that want to help us with that, just give me a call because we, we might have to start a separate subcommittee for that. Community day is set for Saturday, August 15th. We have a rain date of August 16th. More details on that to follow. The Easter egg hunt is Saturday, March 28th at 10 a.m. And its rain date is Sunday, March 29th at 2 p.m. All, all children, infants to nine years old, uh, who can come as long as they come with a low-pack Hong resident. And maybe there's no boots on. And maybe there's no boots. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, as an aside, I <laughs> saw a little funny joke on Facebook. It was snow and a bunch of white eggs, and they're just going to throw them out there and let them find them. But hopefully... <laughs> We don't have to. <laughs> we'll color them if we do that. Um, for, yeah, there's nothing I can do. Easter is Easter. I can't. I don't think the Pope is going to move the date for snow. So, um, tech. Uh, the email lists are live um, right now. We're using a free service, uh, Mailchimp. Um, which was recommended. If we, we have a very big threshold on that, so we shouldn't have to do it. And then I can export it if we ever get over to a platform, a newer platform, and it has something built in. Right now, you can go to the website or our Facebook page to sign up, and you can sign up for email reminders on your sewer, taxes, dog licenses, and community events. Um, once we hire a computer guy, we're going to go forward with upgrading the website. We can't do it from where we are because we're so far behind. We need to jump over a few steps, so we're probably just going to go to a different platform anyways. Online payments have taken a backseat to the budget, but we'll have those up next. All the paperwork's almost done. Animal control. There's a lot of lost pets out there, I think because of the snow. I don't know <laughs> if they're getting confused. They don't know where they are. Um, I'm seeing posts on Facebook all the time, just around in my neighborhood alone. So if you see one wandering around, please call animal control. They'll pick it up and they'll take it to a, a vet or a shelter. If you are missing one, also call animal control. Maybe he's seen your pet or he's brought it to a shelter in the vets in the area. It's really, it's really cold out there for them, so please don't hesitate to call. And there's not a lot for them to eat either. Um, Board of Ed. Superintendent Chando was at the last meeting discussing the progress of the high school. He's helping to plead our case for a light with the Department of Transportation Commissioner Jamie Fox. Um, and then I thank Paul for all the work he's been doing on that as well. We did the resolution tonight um, to go after funding, and let's hope it's a done deal. Lots of people working behind the scenes to get this done. The next hurdle is... I know there's some interest of members of the BOE and the town and everybody on a second means of egress from that school in case of an emergency. It is a huge cost, but I think we do need to at least try to, you know, even if we put together some subcommittee and try to figure out something, because it could be a huge issue. Um, also, I noticed that, um, you know, full-day kindergarten didn't pass. Uh, on, on the referendum item, but they what they are doing is they're seeing if there is any interest in full day kindergarten, there would be a fee for it. So um, they're asking that you call Ginny Rometta at the elementary school, so uh, they want to see how many want to do that. Um, LAA. 
I attended the meeting uh, for Maureen and I was going to help her transition anyways. They approved their bylaws. Um, I do have from baseball signups are going on right now, baseball, softball, and t-ball. T-ball is low. If you have anybody interested in playing t-ball, they, they need some players. They've actually removed the late fee because they're trying to get some kids in. Um, basketball had their community basketball day. I thank Andy Horan, who's in the back, for, for running that again. It's a lot of fun. Also, once again, their wrestling team run the, won the PAWL League, which they usually do every year, so congratulations to them. Um, I, I, I went to the hole after this happened, and I saw Brian there, and all I could think is this, this man is a superman, and I'm just very glad that he's, he's okay, and he's, he, he really loves his job in this town, and just thank goodness he's okay. Truck we can replace, we can't replace Brian. Um, and as far as the last meeting, I want to put it behind us. I thank the mayor for his apology. It was, it was, we all need to, whether we like each other or not doesn't really matter. I mean, you're going to find, you're going to work with people all the time that you like, you don't like, you love, you, you could care less about. Um, I should have, as council president, I should have taken some actions at that meeting, which I didn't, and I apologize to the, the audience for that. And I will make sure that um, regardless of whatever's going on, I will always do my duty to you. And that's all I have. That it for reports. I think we have bills. Oh yeah, the bill list. Okay, the bill list um, with addendum aggregates. Oh yeah, look at Which one? Uh, yeah, yes. Yes. That's okay. I'll try to be very brief because of the uh, lateness of the hour here. Just uh, regarding the DOT. Grant application for the intersection of Belvedere Road and Roseberry Street that will be submitted on Friday to the Department of Transportation. Regarding grants receivable, there were three grants receivable that concerned engineering. Two of the three have been solved already. I, I provided the information already to the uh, finance office. The third one, which is the $40,000 one, I think I have a very good hunch as to when that occurred and what it pertains to. And my next visit to town hall, I'm going to meet with Lorraine. I've already given the mayor some information on that. So uh, I, please be assured that every DOT grant that I've been involved with, and there's a total of seven, have been closed out properly. And I believe you've been reimbursed. So, uh, But I think I know what this $40,000 anomaly is, and I'm going to meet with Lorraine about that. Regarding uh, the Reservoir Road project, tonight you awarded a contract. Those contracts will be out by Friday out mm -hmm. to the contractor. We'll have to have to wait for the weather, mm -hmm. weather to be a little bit better to get the work going, but hopefully in early April we'll, uh, we'll get that pipe installed out there. I'll talk to the contractor tonight before the meeting. Regarding South 3rd Street, which we finished last fall, um, there are some punchless. There are some punchless items, I should say, that are remaining at this point. Ordinarily, you do not close a project out if there's uh, punchless items remaining. But I did talk to the Department of Transportation, and they're willing to close this project out. So I'm going to be working with the DOT um, to to have that happen. I'll need some help from Lorraine on that. We're owed about probably seventy thousand dollars and grant monies on that, so that would be helpful if we uh, get the reimbursement <coughs> request in and we get that closed out with the department. And lastly, on the sinkhole, I do have uh, a draft invoice from the contractor that we hired to uh, remediate the sanitary sewer, which included bypass pumping over a 48-hour period, which was very expensive, by the way. Um, I have a number of questions and concerns over the draft invoice, so there will be a communication going out to the contractor tomorrow. I'm not ready to make a recommendation to, to you on payment for that uh, invoice. So um, so that, there's some loose ends that need to be dealt with on that before uh, you see a recommendation from me. Okay. So we'll see if we can get that accomplished between now and the 18th. That's my report. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Now it's time for the list of bills to be approved. This is a long, long list. Um, yeah, the, the list uh, aggregates $1,817,361.05. I'd like a motion to approve the list of bills. Motion. Second. Second. Seconds, okay. Uh, any discussion on the list of bills? Okay, having no sec no discussion, I would ask for a roll call. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Okay. I guess that's the next thing. Oh, there was one little thing. I don't know if I'll find it. Oh, yes. Fellowship Church, just across the street, um, sent us a letter. Um, and I'll just read it. It's only his paragraph. Dear Mayor McCann, Council Members, on behalf of Fellowship Church, we would like to express our gratitude for your decision to replace a portion of our sidewalk during the renovation of 3rd Street. Please convey our thanks to the engineers and the construction department as well. The work was done quickly and efficiently with no inconvenience to our congregation or school families. And we are grateful for your generous gesture and blessing. William Seppel, Pastor. So I thought that was a nice letter, a nice positive letter to get into the township. And um, things are going along real well. Um, I guess it's time to open the meeting to um, the public. So I make a motion to do that. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 The meeting is open to the public. Oh, I had one more thing. I'm sorry. Oh. I have to just get your approval with everybody if I could just have a motion to uh, post the videos if, after the meeting so this way I'll accommodate Carlos Pereira. Okay. okay. So we just do a policy. So if you, I can want, have do a, you want to do a vote? Yeah, if we just do a vote. Right, I have we'll a second. Do a vote on, on Lori's. Um, I'll post the meeting after the meeting and not wait for the minutes. Okay, do I have a motion? She's I'll make a motion. motion. Second. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Discussion? I think it's a very good policy. I think that we should get them out there as soon as we can. Um, vote. Councilman Delcaro? Yes. Councilman McKay? Yes. Councilman Schneider? Yes. Council President Chesney? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now we're back to um, public comment. Mr. Hall. First of all, 187 Stone Edge Drive. Uh, former chairman of Rent Living Board, it's always been my habit to remind the mayor and council <laughs> that our rent, uh, rent control ordinance uh, needs to be readopted. Uh, it expires every three years. Uh, I believe, and I'll ask Mr. Lavery, the ordinance says that the chapter expires uh, three years from the date of final passage. So does that mean when we last adopted it or does it go back to when the ordinance was created? Well, three years from final passage, so it would be three years from the final passage of the ordinance then in effect. Okay, that was March 7th. So it technically expires in two days? Three days, yeah. So may I request that the, can, can we get this in to get it at first reading tonight for this? No. So you gotta have an order. You can't. You know. I mean, you'll hear people say, "Oh, we're gonna do something by title," but there's no such. Gotcha. You can read an ordinance that's already drafted by title, but the public has to be able to see the ordinance to review it. It's in the book. <laughs> well, I know. But, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, just looking for a loophole but, here because I yeah. know. I know they're, they're, they may jump on this, and you know, uh, a lot of you people weren't here ten years ago when uh, when this was a hot issue. And uh, the voters voted 78% in favor of this mm -hmm. ordinance. Uh, you know, it was it was a hard fought battle. Yeah. Uh, it was a bloody battle. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. Oh, I remember. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I lost my position over it. <laughs> but, well, we could put it on the 18th and then do second reading on the March, whatever date that is. Oh, it's April 1st. Yeah, March 8th. Yeah, yeah, it's into April now. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Now, there, in looking at it, it's it's been adopted there's like a three-month swing that this ordinance has been adopted. I mean, were we just by the luck of the draw that nobody jumped on it to, uh, to say? You know, Bruce, I'll have to take a look at it. I mean, I haven't, I told the last one that was we were in a federal right. lawsuit with them, so right. which was one. Yes, yes, course, we did. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they weren't happy, but yeah, I remember. Okay. So I'll take a look at it, but we'll have an ordinance ready for the next meeting, but. I'd love to be able to accommodate it tonight, but you really you gotta have like something that you can hand up to people and I can show you a web copy of it. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Mrs. DeVos. DeVos to Sunday Way. Just to play on what Mr. Hall brought up. Um, I had a meeting today with the landlord from Breakley Gardens, 
and I've also met recently with Larkin, who's our other landlord in town, and they both would like some changes to the ordinance. And so that's why it's been, I haven't brought it forward because their changes are not monumental, but I needed to run it past my flavor and Katrina, and I haven't yet because I just found out today what their things were. So that's why I just wanted to say that that's been the delay. Okay. So if I can ask for a couple more weeks. That's well, you know, you know what I'll do? I'll take a look at it and we'll let you know because if we have a couple more weeks, if not, what I would suggest is we get the ordinance, you know, first reading, get it adopted, and then we can always, we can always revise it. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, all right. So, if so, if, if we have time rest. to change it, then that works beautifully yeah, for all of them. Suggestion. Okay. Thank you. No Good evening, Eric Johnson, 361 Stonehenge Drive. Yes, I got that right. It's still evening. It's almost the morning. I'll go as quick as I I'll go as quick as I can. I have a couple of questions. If I don't ask them tonight, I think I probably forget by next weekend. Um, there's a lot of talk about the the sewer, and I have a question. And somebody, if it's a long answer, somebody can get me in private, or I can talk to Lori um, when we meet. Or the, he's a sewer guy. <laughs> but, or, or anybody who wants. But the, the, overpay, the overpayment we made over the last decade to Billsburg for the wastewater treatment plant, whatever happened with that? Are we getting our money back? It's, it's still not settled litigation. yet. It's not settled. Okay. It's still litigation. Okay. No, then don't, okay. I just want, I just, just was curious. Um, audience participation is, is very important to the council, to the audience. And I'm not upset, but I just want to say, you know, one month ago when I brought up the truck, you know, I came up with my phone and, I had all these trucks here. I had all these trucks for these fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Um, it was disregarded because our current truck is in such bad condition. I feel like if we wanted to research the the cost of the uh, or the actual value of the truck, we should have done that a month ago. I feel like we lost a month because maybe my comment was discredited too quickly that I, I was concerned about the price. I'm glad that we're doing it, but I, I feel like maybe a month ago was the right time to do it. Um, th regarding the sewer. Fees. There is a there's a sewer credit if you own a pool. This is this takes into account the water that you put into your pool that doesn't go through the sewer. It has been thirty five dollars for I don't know. It's over ten years, fifteen years. Since then, the sewer rates have doubled to tripled. It doesn't make <coughs> sense that the sewer credit hasn't gone up to account for the higher sewer prices. So I'd like the council to consider um, maybe updating that to be a little bit more current and relevant to get that sewer credit. I know it takes a lot of, it takes more than $35 to top off a pool in, in the spring. It's probably off by a Do you have a second time. meter? The second meter no, might but, save you more money. Yes, but the second meter also costs money to get the permit, and it costs money to get it in. And for $35 a pop, no one's, it's not worth it to put a second meter in quite yet. Um, and I don't have a pool big enough to make it worth my while. But this is for other pool owners. And um, my last comment was when we were talking about the, uh, the volunteers, you know, accessing volunteers to records room, you know, whether we should allow or not allow it. You guys can decide whatever you want. I'm on board, but I just do want to bring it to your attention as you're just as you're discussing this and figure out what to do. There are different levels of volunteers. Certain volunteers, volunteers are critical to this town to keep the town going. We rely on them a lot. There are different levels of volunteers. Maybe some volunteers would be a hindrance for you to to make them stay in the hallway, and potentially they won't want, won't want to volunteer again. So do think about the level of volunteers, and maybe you come up with a tier system that says if you're if you're a volunteer on this level, you have the access. But if not, sorry, we're gonna have to leave you out in the hallway. Just something to consider. Um, that was it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Juniper Lifer, 32 Jade Lane. First, I'd like to thank Nicole for remembering to bring a pen tonight because I've been borrowing it all night. I'm gonna be really quick. I jotted some things down that I just wanted to cover. Um, just briefly, Maureen, I, I feel that although at the end of your statement, uh, you did say that you felt tonight's meeting went well, uh, which I agree with, that I just think that the rest of what you said is fairly inconsistent with what I've seen. I know that the mayor has put forth uh, a great deal of effort to try to bring about the change that he promised to the voters of this town. And, you know, to speak to my earlier comments about showing one another that respect and to your comments about the fact that <coughs> you all have the right to be there and that you all were voted in, I think you need to recognize that, you know, Tom ran on a very clear platform. He promised the people of this township that he was going to replace some of these township employees, that he was going to place some of the 
replace some of the people on the boards, you know, who had made some decisions who were not, that were not inconsistent with, you know, their, their feelings. And that's what the people voted for. So, you know, whether you like it or not, I mean, I, I think that when you disrespect the decisions that he's making in accordance with those promises, you're disrespecting those voters. And I just urge you to consider that. I mean, I really do think you need to consider that they voted for the changes that he's trying to instill. And I've spoken to Tom on many occasions and, uh, and uh, urged him to block out the noise and to come through for his voters because we expect him to do that. I expect him to do that regardless of the noise that is made um, to prevent that. So anyway, uh, I do feel uh, that I agree with you that tonight was very encouraging and I hope to, to see things continue moving in that direction. Um, I jotted down a quick note about the fire truck. Uh, I agree, we should get an appraisal. You know, it, why is Oxford want it if it's, if it's a piece of junk? What are they gonna do with it? Has anybody asked their township what they intend to do with this truck? Are they gonna use it? Are they going to fix it? You know, we paid over four hundred thousand dollars that we didn't have for a new truck. So maybe if it if it really was within fifty or even a hundred thousand dollars, it's more you know, than that. To fix, well, I'm I'm just saying when it's you're over the long term, okay, because you got a good deal on the truck, okay, that was a five hundred and over five almost six hundred. I'm, I'm just almost, saying I agree with no, no, you. Let me, that, no, let me finish. It was almost six hundred thousand dollars truck. We got it for four hundred thousand. In three more years, the truck would have to be replaced anyhow. So adding all the expense right. to fix the truck up, okay, and then probably have to probably give it away, all right, and then purchasing a new truck three years from now, all right, which you probably pay the full boat, if more, probably more than six hundred thousand dollars. So you spend a little more money now to save down the road. And right, the and an appraisal, an appraisal might offer you the opportunity to verify that statement. You know, we might have a really good idea. I think it's fair to ask what what Oxford plans to do with it. I mean, for six thousand dollars, they must have some use for it. Because and if they have they a use for it, it for fun. well, I mean, so that's an interesting point. Anyway, I'm just saying that I, I agree. I think it's great. I'm not doubting the reasoning you gave. That may very well be true. I'm just saying I completely agree with the comments that that Eric Johnson had made at the last meeting, and that I think it is wise for us to consider those kind of things and to not take things on blind faith. If this other township wants it and intends to use it, that right there says it might have some value we don't see. And we should probably seek professional uh, knowledge on that. Um, okay, move on. I want to be fast. I know it's late. Um, the pavilion came up. As you guys may know, I am the director of Lopakong Cub Scout Day Camp. We spend a lot of money on that camp. Um, and uh, we provide a great week for a lot of kids, over 100 kids. And uh, if, if you've ever looked at the prices of uh, day camp or summer camp, you know that they're pretty out of hand these days. So I put forth a tremendous amount of time and effort to give these kids the full camp experience uh, that they may not get otherwise um, because it is a very inexpensive camp. So in any event, if there is any hope that the, the rates could be reduced on the pavilion and that could, our nonprofit organization <coughs> camp could be given some kind of a break on what we pay for that, uh, that would be a tremendous benefit to our budget and allow us to provide a better program for our campers. Uh, so I would love to see that happen. Secondly, it came to mind when, when I thought about the scout camp that uh, I've, I've been told that it is an ordinance of our township that requires us to use blunt tip arrows, so I can't teach my Cub Scouts to shoot real arrows. Um, I'm wondering if there's any reasoning for that, what the ordinance looks like, if we can look at it. I'd love to allow my scouts to shoot real arrows. My husband can't either set an ordinance. I, I, I don't know if it's something that came out of the police department. Right. Probably the okay. wire. Yeah, I just kind of like, I, really I want to, there, if there's good reasoning and, and, and um, I just want to kind of know what it is and, and maybe I'll agree with it, maybe I won't, but other, other it's to avoid the broadheads on it because my husband hunts and he can't, when he practices in the backyard, he cannot have his broadheads on because right. he could kill somebody with that should right. they come in. Oh yeah, I mean, we, yeah. we have fully yeah. trained, yeah. you know, archery instructors and right. we have a range and whatnot. Right. We don't do BBs over here on this side of Delaware, um, but uh, but anyway, uh, I certainly like to, to help my scouts learn those uh, those excellent outdoor skills and uh, the real deal would, would benefit them also. Um, and then uh, just lastly here to the point of the auditor, just going back to what I said before, Tom made promises to the people of this town. Um, that's what they wanted to see. You can shake your head and disagreement, but they did vote for him, you know, and, and by fairly good margin. That is platform that he so. ran that he was going to fire the auditor? Uh, I mean, we spoke, we no. spoke, uh, uh, 
uh, fairly clearly about, you know, wanting to make changes to the financial systems in this town. <coughs> and people, that really resonated with people. That's something I can say with absolute surety. I mean, but you're really, throwing out the baby with the bathwater doesn't necessarily help them. Like, we're trying to do the best for the residents. I have no stock in this Avachia LLP. It doesn't matter yeah, to me if and, they get the business fine. or not. And, and, yeah. I, and this is just my, right. my, my public comment. I, I'm not looking to argue with anyone. Um, obviously, the decision has been made. We're going to stick with the current auditors, and the onus is on council now to to hold them accountable to to maybe well, doing a better job. The CFO yes. and the council that okay. need to do well, the, so, the job. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, now now what we have what we have. Uh, those of us who, who didn't get our way can't piss and moan about it and, uh, you know, hold things back. We need to move forward. And those of you who are happy about it need to make sure you hold them yeah. accountable and it's that here. it turns out to be a good decision. Because the auditors audit. That's what they do. We do the decisions here. We make, we yeah, I'm not audit. here to argue. Yeah. I'm just saying it's it's time for us to move forward. That's uh, that's what we need to do. That's right. So thank you very much. Thank you, Juniper. Oh, a great job, Tom. <clears throat> what? Oh, a great job. We all did a great job. Everyone. Lee Vizicki, 56 Pudding Stone Way. Um, just two two comments <coughs> um, about the agenda. Uh, I've been on quite a few boards, and I know a municipality is, has a different organization and and way of running things so um but um it, as far as resolutions on the agenda um i i hope to see a, a better communication between the mayor and council members on on the items on the agenda uh perhaps a discussion beforehand um a way to um enhance um moving along of the agenda i i would urge council members to read up on your Robert's rules because if you know if a resolution is brought forward by Lori and and Tom you feel uh, you have the bigger picture as far as the financial impact then you send that to committee then you don't vote on it but you send a committee so there are ways if I encourage each council member to read through your Robert's rules there are ways through various motions call to action mm -hmm. Um, you call the question, which will um, improve your your process of your agenda um, and and voting on um, on your agenda items and resolutions. So um, I encourage you to to really look into that and and practice. It does take practice, and you will get more comfortable, and your meetings will run a lot smoother. Um, and my other comment, my personal feeling, um, I agree. I like the idea from Eric, I believe, about the level of uh, volunteers. I also heard um, someone in the audience talk about um, a loitering policy. Um, and I think that was a, a great idea, perhaps attach that to your volunteer policy. Um, the level of volunteers. I, as a citizen of this town, do not want um, volunteers, um, non-employed people coming back, um, looking through files that are not designated for their use. Um, as a board member, I had to um, be escorted with certain um, documents, even as a board member, um, to review um, and not take home with me at all. So um, I personally feel that um, some restrictions should be put into your policy for um, for volunteers and the levels and um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Just read real quick, first one. <laughs> Ed Schuster, Captain Volunteers. Um, be glad you have volunteers. If you make it too rough for them, you're not going to have any. Now, as far as letting them in the office, volunteers, not elected, whatever you want to say, you don't let them in there. If you want to put them in a hall and put them on a the table, which I think has been stated, if one of their friends happens to come in and they get talking, are you going to prevent that? Because that friend, what are you doing? Or they could have it set up. The volunteer tell a friend, hey, I'm, I'm here today. If you want to check something out, you know, come on in and just talk to me. You know, it might sound silly, but it's just easy for them to do that than to have the volunteers go look at something else. Plus, I don't think because they're volunteers not getting $20 an hour, they want to spend any more time in there than what they have to. They're yeah. volunteering. They want to get in there, do what they have to do, and get the hell home. So, you know, that's just something else to think about. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. And the, the meeting was 
a lot better tonight. Thank you. Not perfect, but it was better. It's, 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 all, it's all them. I'm just sitting here. It's getting there. Now it's you, too, because you know what it's in last time. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Rob Larson, 26 Browning Court. Uh, Councilman McCabe, you're spot on in your assessment, and I support you. Thank you. Uh, Council President Chesler, quick question. Have you considered suing the mayor to settle the dispute of who actually has control or should share control over the agenda? I would hope that we don't get to that point, but I also don't want it to be a fight every month. There have been some lawsuits. Uh, uh, and I know there was one, uh, Newark versus Sharp Jones was a big right. one trying to do that. I hope we don't get to that. I hope we can come to a consensus. I mean, from what I'm reading, it's it's all of our agenda. And I, I think it should be that way. Anyways, people should be able to put anything on. I, know, I hope it doesn't get to that point. But I, I do like to get things done. So if it has to, then that's the route we would have to go. Because there is precedent for that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not mistaken, right? Mr. Leary? Well, yeah, as I said before, there's... It's all over the. We have a unique form of government here, so I think we have to work together. Right? Great. Because, yeah. as you know, I don't want it to get that way. As you, you know, I had the right tonight, and I had the right the other night to make a motion to censure uh, Mayor McKay for his actions, and I decided not to do that. Okay. I decided to let's let let it go and make sure it doesn't right. happen again. If it does happen again, there will be a mention motion to censure. But I'm I'm we trying can't, to we can't yeah. let one person's ego. Get in the way of conducting town's business. You're aware of that, right? Right, yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor McKay. Lewis Carter, 11, 1119 Fifth Avenue, Alpha, New Jersey. Um, first thing, I wanted to thank Councilwoman Schneider for the Comment she made about when they origin when this board originally voted for the CFO, and that at that time you had voted no, but after your experience, you would vote yes again. And I can just tell you, I have the utmost respect for the CFO that you have. Um, as everyone knows, she used to work for, for Alpha, and I have nothing but the highest regard for all the professional work that I've seen from from this CFO. Thanks. Um, you're welcome. Uh, for two years as director of public safety, I spent the majority of my time purchasing fire truck. But also, in addition to that, is we had a 1982 uh, pumper that, because our fire department said we need to have a certain amount of equipment, we we actually the council spent twenty-two thousand dollars on bringing it back up to speed, so to speak. But to actually bring it up to code, there's a 1992 National Fire Protection association code and to, to take our 82 Mac up there would probably cost hundred thousand dollars these are these are the problems with these older trucks and I, I myself would wonder what is Oxford doing to, to actually take this in they would have to repair it to make it serviceable it sounds like it, there's this, a is, this is a 98 it's not that old <coughs> I was 86 what no, was it? Yeah, that's, the, um, that's a cascade truck it was, that's, but, a, yeah. that's a panel truck. But the other truck, the 97, truck. only has a 20-year life, and unfortunately, it's almost 20 years from 1997. Yeah, we're, all right, but <laughs> we're all getting much uh, older. Obviously, this council has research on that, and, and I really applaud that. If it is actually that much newer than that, then uh, um, I would suspect that there's there's some value there. And $6,000 for that sounds very, very low. If I was going to go to Oxford and says I have an 82 Mac now, when we get our new... Uh, Fire truck. Hopefully, by the end of this year, um, maybe they'll buy it too. <laughs> we're going to have to we're going to have to choose what to do with it, and uh, maybe Oxford at that time we still want one, and maybe I can sell them R82 Mac. But that being said, um, th there is something called the ISO rating, and when you have a certain amount of serviceable equipment, even ones that are in reserve, can help all the residents out here keep their insurance rates for their residential and even commercial insurance rates lower because there's all kinds of criteria that go into the ISO rating and having a certain amount of equipment is part of that. So I hope you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater and put it, put the uh, township in a position where the ISO rating might be uh, challenged in the future. They redo that every so many years. I don't know when the last time this township got uh, reevaluated for ISO ratings, 
Last year, yeah. Oh, yeah. recently? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <coughs> and uh, as I had said before with Robert's rules, uh, um, and my experience is there, there are certain things I got to say is it's, it's always a privilege to come to other towns. I, I learn to see how they run their meetings. Uh, personalities and size, there's different procedures, there's different ways of doing things, and I hope by having this opportunity to share tonight, uh, there might be some improvement. If anyone wants to contact me, uh, I think the mayor has my number. I have to talk that. about things. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. I, I just uh, just a quick um, comment, Lou. I know that um, there's some residents that have looked into that the um, ISO. Um, theory, I guess, and uh, you know, I, I myself have called my own insurance company, and they don't necessarily look at the ISO rating for your insurance rates. So um, I think that may be something that certain insurance companies might do, but not all of them. The That's, better ones do, yeah. And your well, rate will actually be lower if they incorporate that. I have New Jersey manufacturers, and they don't go they, they use on the ISO. The scenes in their actuarial statistics, but um, it's very, very big. It's always used in commercial, and that's where the biggest premiums are. Well, I like to see what behind the scenes means because when I called them, they said, "No, we don't. That your your rate is not based on that." It's in their actuarial. They may not realize it, but okay. Well, um, in any case, there have been some other ones also that uh, I know people have called, and their insurance companies have also said the same thing. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, motion to close public comments. Seeing there's no one else commenting. Motion. Second. Okay. Um, roll call. All in favor. All in favor. No, all in favor. Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Thank you for coming. No, motion to adjourn. Oh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.